Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Hello. the nerdy, the wordy, the book, the club. Oh. <laughs> So close. What? This is open and it's gonna piss me off. You know what? Fair. That looks like crap. Guys, it's What's a very up? special book club today. Yes. Uh, I hope that you'll indulge us at the beginning of book club Hello. this morning mm -hmm. because uh, last night on my mother's birthday, the channel passed 10,000 subscribers. Yeah. Uh, it's been a goal that we've been working on for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we just wanted to say a huge thank you. Uh, to everyone who joined us, and we're going to open some Vuv Clico <laughs> and have a little champagne, a little mimosa morning Mimosa here book club morning. On the Nerdy Wordy Book Club. Because uh, it's cool, guys. It's really, it's really, really cool. Okay. 10K is, is a big one. Do you um, remember the last time I popped champagne and it hit the ceiling? And then we lost the cork. <laughs> we lost we, the cork until the day it. we moved. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do remember that. <laughs> we found, we found... Perfect. Did better that time. We right. found the cork the day that we moved out of that apartment. Yes, yes, we did. All right, so here's a little vuv for you. Oh, wow, we fancy. You didn't get like a cheap prosecco. You got an actual. We hit 10k. <laughs> no, I know. You don't go cheap on a celebration. It's true. That's the one thing my mom taught me is that like <laughs> if you're gonna celebrate, celebrate properly. Yes. All right. And cheers also, to you. happy birthday, Trish. And happy birthday to everyone. Say happy birthday to my mom. Yes. Uh, and let's say a happy birthday to, or no, a happy 10K to happy us. Happy 10K. And a huge thank you to everyone who makes this channel possible, everyone who watches it, and especially to our lovely mods. Uh, mods, thank Cheers. you so much. You are the best. Cheers to the mods. <sighs> oh, that doesn't taste like shit. Yeah, because it's Vuv Clicquot. Nice, nice. There's, no, it tastes good. Um, um, Bitstorm, Bit thank you so much for being a member for seven months. Thank you, welcome back to the nerd table. All right, we're going to put orange juice in this now and make it a mimosa. Yeah, yeah. We did our thing, we did the cheers. We did the cheers, we did it's the like a syrup. half and half mimosa, I love it. Yeah. Great, I love that for us. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think it's time. 10K! 10K. <laughs> I think it's time to start the show. What's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy. And I'm Clarice. Welcome to the Nerdy, the Wordy, the Book Club. Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm, is a show where we talk about it's a show. our new favorite book series, The Wheel <laughs> of Time. Today, that is The Lord of Chaos. It is. Prologue through chapter mm -hmm. 11. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, WL, thank you for that super chat. Thank you. Uh, for the congrats super on chat. 10K. Well deserved. Thanks much. Very much appreciate that. It's a big one for us. Thank you. Um, oh, we get to keep cheersing people. We get to cheer. Yes. Cheers. The we more the more you time. super chat, the more I drink. <laughs> yes. Cheers. Great. I love that. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> All right. I think that's like banned on Twitch, right? You're not allowed to do that. Oh, yeah. I You're not allowed to can. have drinking rewards anymore on Twitch because right. streamers are getting too drunk. Right, right, right. right. Um, mm -hmm. Clarus, we have read the first 11 chapters as Which well like... as the novel that is the prologue. Yes, yes. This is This could literally be an entire book in itself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the prologue. Yeah, that... should we talk about? Should we, should we talk about uh, the prologue? The prologue is going to take some time, so yeah, let's. Uh, let's, let's. I want to. I want to talk to you before we get into the book itself. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to you about what your thoughts are about where we're starting off with all of our characters here, mm -hmm. and what you think of j just general thoughts on the beginning of Lord of Chaos as a whole. It's definitely not what we thought it was going to be. No, no, it's not what we, we thought were like, it was going to be. It's going to be this crazy thing with this Modian, and it's going to be. Um, like, uh... We thought that people would wonder what happened to Asmodian? Yeah, yeah. We thought it was gonna, like, hit the ground running, take off, and start with something big. Yeah. And it does start with, like, big things, but not in the way that, like, we thought, I guess. Yeah. I just can't um, imagine... I can't imagine being one of those people who was reading this book to book when they came out and, like, spending two years being like, what happened to Asmodian? Yes. And, and then... then not finding out? <laughs> not even that. He's barely mentioned. No! Random mentions him once. He's like, God, I can't believe I let Asmodian escape. And I'm like... It was such a fleeting mention. I missed it. You missed it. We were talking about it last night. And you yeah. were like, I still don't know what happens to Asmodian. And I was like, yeah, it's weird. Like, Rand thinks he ran away or whatever. And you were like, what? Yeah, no, I, I, I somehow, like, I, I don't know. It's um, literally like a throwaway line. Yeah. And that was wild. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ember Eye says um, Demandred mentions him. Yes, yes but Demandred yes. doesn't know that he's dead. Uh. Because they're still, they still want to kill him, right? Hush, thank you Hush. for that super chat. Cheers, thank you for the super Congrats chat. On 10K. 10K. <laughs> 
Yeah, um, I, yeah, I really cannot imagine waiting for the books and then, like, speed reading my way through. Because I don't know if, I don't know when we find out what happens. We might not find out in this book. Honestly, we might not. We Robert still Jordan don't know is. what the hell's going on with Ship Captain, you guys. That's true. Is Ship Captain in the first 11 if chapters you, of The Lord of Chaos? He's fucking not. No, if you want to know what's happening with Ship Captain, you check our TikTok. <laughs> that TikTok got taken down on Instagram. Yeah, but it's um, still up on TikTok for some reason. Before we go chapter by chapter, uh -huh. like we always do, mm -hmm. got a couple of things to do at the beginning here. And the first is say that this podcast is brought to you by Audible. Mm -hmm. Audible is... Where you listen to the words that somebody else wrote and then somebody else reads it, usually. I don't think many authors do their own audiobooks. Audible is a service uh, brought to you by our uh, corporate overlords, Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, that allows you to uh, basically have a subscription service to audiobooks. Because mm -hmm. I found out that recently, because I've never actually bought an audiobook, Audiobooks are really expensive. Yeah. But with Audible, you can get a free audiobook every month credited to your account, meaning that for the price of any other streaming service, you get a free book that would be way more expensive <laughs> uh, if you didn't uh, go through Audible. By itself, absolutely. I didn't understand Audible until I looked at how expensive audiobooks were, and now I get it. Yeah. Audibletrial.com slash nerdy nightly. Nerdy nightly. Bob C. Cheers. cheers. Thank you for that super chat. Book six is my third favorite. Your third oh. favorite? Super excited surgery. Thank you for that. Uh, mom? Oh, uh, it's Nerdy's mom in the chat. Everyone, Trisha everyone, Wright. That's my mother. Say uh, happy belated birthday to Trish in the chat. Cheers then. to you, mom. But also, mom, you don't have to give me money anymore. I'm an adult, okay? I'm I'm a grown boy. <laughs> uh, Turvok, thank you for joining for six months to the Nargs of the Nerd Table. Thank you, thank you, and uh, cheers, friends. But seriously, mom, happy birthday. I cannot wait to celebrate with you when we're back in... Uh, no, we'll see you here first, so... Excited October. for that. Yeah, October. Yeah. Um, Y'all, uh, yeah, audibletrial.com slash nerdy nightly is where you go to get your free month of Audible and a free audiobook on us. Might I recommend The Lord of Chaos? <laughs> or, or, and because we got some fun news this week. Yeah. Uh, the Great Hunt uh, in a couple of months is going to drop, uh, this time read by Rosamund Pike. Yes. So if you want to continue the Wheel of Time journey that she started with her reading of Eye of the World, okay, that's right. uh, this fall... Uh, you'll be able to get her reading of The Great Hunt. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometime in early 2023, you'll be able to go to audibletrial.com slash nerdy nightly uh, mm -hmm. and listen to Rosamund Pike, the woman who said that the bottom of a pineapple looks like a butt plug. Um, and you'll be able to hear her read The <laughs> Dragon Reborn. She is just d delightful. Truly um, a treasure. Yes, truly, truly a, a treasure. treasure. I'm actually, I my plan is to sign up for Audible, get uh, The Eye of the World. And while I'm like editing photos and such, just kind of have that on as like a... Refresher while we're going so, through the series. So you're starting your first reread while you do your first read. Yes. You are a mad lad. Yes. But let's get into the prologue of The Lord of Chaos. <sighs> Buckle up. So Demandred walks into hell and talks to the devil. Yeah. It's a crazy opening sequence. Yeah, that's, you know, casual. <laughs> you're like Tuesday afternoon, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I didn't. I didn't realize that you could like literally talk to the devil. I don't think that they realized it either. Right now, until recently. No, I think they've they've been able to talk to him the whole time. No, no, I thought they've him. All... Android was like, this is a new sensation. Like he's like a. Uh, uh, it's like a new thing for him. No, no, because he knows that the pleasure and the pain of it is coming. The only thing that's different now is that there is um, the mouth of Sauron there with him while he does it. Mm -hmm. But they have literally been able to talk to the Dark One this whole time. And I thought, I, I, I guess it makes sense, right? Because the uh, instructions are too specific for him not to be able to just say them. For them to, like, divine it from, like, leaves falling off of trees or something like that. Right. Um, but I, I, I was still shocked <laughs> when it was suddenly uh, the Dark One just, like, being like, Dumb yeah. I am in your body. How fares the world? How fares the world? Yeah, and like, I, I'm... Beautiful voice. The, yeah, this is one of those ones where I'm like, who do you get to voice this in the show? Um, um, Morgan Freeman. The voice <laughs> of the god and the devil. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh my god, Morgan Freeman is the voice He's of the Dark One? The only correct answer. How or Benedict Cumberbatch. World. 
Or Benedict Cumberbatch could do Dirt a great job Madrid. of it. But but that's that's it. Ooh, Benedict Cumberbatch is a good pick. Those are the only two options that you get. Um, I was gonna go with Keith David. I don't know who that is. Keith David's an excellent actor. He was just in um uh, Nope, uh, the new Jordan Peele movie. Uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Vin freaking Diesel. Absolutely not. If get they could out of get here. Vin Diesel, I would be down. Vin no. Diesel's an incredible voice actor. Iron Giant, guys. Iron freaking giant. Oh my god. Um, so yeah, Demandred meets some um, Shadar Haran. Shadar Haran, uh, who is this weirdly tall Madral, who is yeah. essentially the mouth of Sauron. Yes. Yes. Basic. Yes. The mouth of Sauron. If you, you you to disobey him is to disobey me. Mm -hmm. What the dark one says something Very along cool. those lines, and I was like, oh shit. Well, and this helps what I was talking about um, a lot in Fires of Heaven, where I, especially at the end of Fires of Heaven, when some of these Forsaken had died, where I was like, we need more villains. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we need... Who are these people going to fight if there's nine books left? And so this prologue was like, all right, here are the rest of the Forsaken. Yeah. Also, here's the Shaidar Haran. Here's Asengar. And here's Arangar. Yeah. There's, we're, we're, we have some more villains. Don't worry. Well, it literally was like last week. You were yeah. like, this, we're running out of Forsaken. And mm -hmm. it's like Robert Jordan heard you. And yeah. And it's like, you know what? I get mm. you covered. Literally, I'm sure everyone in chat was like, just wait. Just, just freaking wait. Just wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I wish Gilbert Gottfried was still around. Oh, How no. fares the world? No, no. The Mandrid. No. What is going on with my friend, Asmodian? Takuna says it's just all capital subtitles and no voice. Ooh, that would ask a lot of the actor who plays the Mandrid. But if the actor who plays the Mandrid, like, did that really well, it would be fun. The problem with it is if the local closed captioning accidentally writes over those subtitles oh yeah yeah that, that can get awkward if that it's like be awkward. <laughs> loud boom noise <laughs> over top of over the top words. of the yeah, words yeah, 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 um yeah. but no that would actually I would, that would be really cool i, I would find that really interesting mm -hmm. yeah yeah well we got more villains um yeah we got that um so uh demander just basically told um some oh. stuff to let other people know. Yes. We also find out that the Madral swords are made of uh, dead humans. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they need to kill someone to make a sword. Well, and that Dark. was... Yeah, that was why... As soon as he said, like, the Madral blades, like, wore out, and there were, like, prisoners there, I was like, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Like, I knew, I knew exactly where this was going, and I was like, eh, I'm uncomfy. Uh, Sean Bear says, Nerdy, have you seen the recording of Gilbert Gottfried reading the Dark One in this chapter? No, but as soon as this is done, I will. <laughs> yes. I will film a reaction of that. Uh, we'll stop book club and we will film a reaction. No, no, not right now. We'll do that later today. Uh, we'll post that later today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. That might not be public on the YouTube though. So like, check Discord or like, we'll, we'll yeah, figure out where that goes. Depends on legal stuff. So, uh, Nynaeve Almira is our next character. Uh, -huh. uh she's in Saladar. Um, and she's just sitting in a room with Sawan and Leanne, and you're like, it's weird, right? That she's just, like, chilling in this room with how the last book ended. Uh, until you realize, <laughs> girl's wearing an Adam and has Mogidian locked up. Yep. How do you feel about that? Well, it's weird, right? Because, it's weird. Because Mogadian has incredibly useful knowledge and information mm -hmm. that they can definitely benefit from. Oh, 100%, yeah. However, if Mogadian ever escapes somehow, uh, they're all screwed. Um, and also, I mean, here's the thing. Mogadian has done terrible, atrocious, awful things that I'm kind of like, it is, is the Adam much different than like being thrown in like a prison for the rest of your life? Yeah, I because guess, someone is, but... like, literally, like, controlling you and manipulating you at all times and beating you regularly with magic. I guess. It's it's interesting, though, because, like, because if Mogadian preferred death, mm -hmm. Mogadian could go tell the Aes Sedai who she was. If Mogadian wanted to die instead of being chained up, mm. then she then she could she could make that happen. And Nynaeve kind of implies as much. Yeah, no, that's true. Several times. And it, it, it's, it's, it's a really, like, awkward situation, right? <laughs> well, and I think that it gets into the fact that pretty much everyone in this sh uh, series right now has very morally gray values. Oh, yeah. Because this is a very everybody. morally gray decision. Yeah, for sure. Um, Even though Mogadian is 
totally evil. Mm -hmm. The way that they, she's being controlled and manipulated is not great. Yeah. <laughs> either. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's not, it's not the, like, necessarily the most, like, upstanding decision for Nynaeve to make. No, but I, I, like... As much as we've had problems with Nynaeve, I do have to say, I am happy that this section of the book didn't get into Nynaeve going too far and abusing that. You know what I mean? Oh, as much as I as much as I feel a little bit icky about it, yeah. I think this is the best Nynaeve has ever come across to me. Yeah. This is or not not the best she's come across. This is the most interesting she's ever been to me. Like yes. honestly, like in terms of all of my problems with how the women, particularly Elaine and Nynaeve, are written, in, especially Together. toward the second half of Fires yeah. of Heaven, yeah. are all gone coming into Lords of Heaven, right? Like, yes. Or Lords of Chaos, sorry. Um, Lords of Heaven. Like, they're, the way that Nynaeve and Elaine in particular are interacting around Saladar mm -hmm. and around the learning and, and the way that they are being praised and they're getting mm -hmm. all the praise they wanted, but it's not for reasons that they think that they deserve. Yes. And so they're not enjoying it. I think that, like, that is fascinating, and I'm really, really loving it. Yeah, So, yeah. I, as much as I'm, like, the, the Mogidian stuff is complicated and makes me icky a little bit. Yeah. I'm not against it. I, I really like it. It's just, it is complicated. Well, especially because, like, we know how completely awful Mogidian is, right? Mm -hmm. There is no question a Mogidian is evil and has done evil heinous horrendous things yeah, yeah and so you look at that and you're like well obviously it's a sticky situation to be put in but um <laughs> my sympathy for mogadian is very limited <laughs> yeah right yeah it's 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 interesting uh so uh the the naive is trying to basically fix them being still right she thinks that it's something that can be healed they yes. don't uh, and uh, she finds this like rough edge that feels like it's been severed in one power. And so Nynaeve is actually feeling encouraged. She she leaves this meeting thinking like, oh, maybe there's a possibility. Mm -hmm. But before they can get any further, uh, Elaine Tracand, the first daughter of Morghais, future Tricand. queen of Andor. That's Tracand. Tric you want Trackend? I, I... Track and field. Elaine Trackenfield bursts into the room, <laughs> and she's like, yo. They're going to go see Rand, and they're not taking me, but they're sending Min, and I don't know how I feel about it. Which is fair. Yeah. Fair. Everything in this beginning part, honestly, fascinating. Very complicated, very, like we said, morally gray. Like, I, I, I honestly was like, this, this beginning, like, prologue section, as, like, kind of crazy and as all over the place as it was, I thought was stellar writing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There was literally, like, a moment where... In the first section, they talked about the boar, the dark one, and the boar through the, through hell or whatever it is. Um, yeah. And then later on, Robert Jordan uses that word, um, talking about um, uh, Nynaeve. Um, what did I write? Oh, of Nynaeve trying to bore into Mogadian's knowledge, and it was just these like interesting uses of words. Yeah. In like different situations that like I just like those like tiny details. I, the, the the writing of this prologue I think was just fantastic. Well, and actually, just get back to the Mandarin section for a second. The um, concept of the boar not technically being a place, but that it's like it exists outside of place. But Shia Ghoul is where the the line of it is the thinnest. Yeah. Is so interesting. Yeah. I, I it's like a mind boggling like multiverse concept, but I really yeah. enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, our, our girl Min is gonna go see Rand, which is fun. And um, Elaine and Min kind of have, uh, I think, a really sweet moment mm -hmm. where they both recognize the difficulty of the situation. Mm -hmm. You know, what if one of us changes our mind? That's a fair question because people sometimes act irrationally through because of emotion. Yeah. And I really hope that Rand does not come between them. Between Min and Elaine. Yes, because I I want to see a like, I, I would like more female relationships that are like not conflicting. Toxic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. You know what I mean? If they're able to like navigate this really tough situation that they're in with um grace and composure, mm -hmm. I think that that would be far more interesting than them than the classic like fighting over a man kind of. <gasps> Anthony Acton, thank you for gifting five memberships to Anthony. the community. Cheers Happy to you, my friend. Cheers. Thank Happy you. Happy 10K. Yep. Including two mods, Maturk and Takuna Let's getting go. a membership. Let's go. Enjoy those emotes. Philip, Mike, and Narafin, send a big ol' thank you over to Anthony for that. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, my mm -hmm. friend. 
Um, after uh, after uh, Elaine leaves the room, uh, we actually cut to her point of view here, mm-hmm. uh, which uh, Robert Jordan does a couple times in this prologue, which I enjoyed. Yeah. Um, we follow Elaine out. Uh, she uh, waves at um, Brigitte, who is playing with the two boys mm-hmm. uh, that Mogidian kidnapped. So yeah. that and answers she's like, that. Nope, they were all kinds of messed up before I got there. And I'm Fair. like, mm. No, I buy it. I'm sure that they were at least a little bit traumatized from beforehand, but I I do not think that Mogadian did nothing. I don't think Mogadian can lie to them through the Adam. I think they know when she's lying. Oh. Right? So I think that because they're wearing the bracelet... I forgot I, about that. I, yeah, because she's wearing the bracelet, I don't think that they can that she can lie to them. Hmm. So I think she's telling the truth. Okay. And honestly, based on what was going on there, can you imagine being the kid in the middle of all that madness? Yeah. It makes sense. Um, it's still messed up and sad. Um, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, and then uh, Gareth Bryan rides by, and Elaine is like, Daddy. And he's like, does not look at her, and she's like, Daddy. It is, I thought, I definitely thought that uh, Gareth Bryan and Elaine would have more of a relationship in this place, in Saladar. Um, he's just, like, so spurned by her mom that he's like, I can't look at you because you look like your mom and she broke my heart. I guess. Gareth Bryan he has a tough exterior. He's a soft boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is a, sure. he is a he's like a Japanese cheesecake on the inside. Just mm-hmm. so soft you can cut through it with a fork. Jesus but if Christ. you've never had Uncle Tetsu's Japanese cheesecake, I recommend it. It's, it's very good. It's very good. It's very good. Yeah, I don't know. I was really looking forward to seeing a, a Gareth Hashtag Bryan a and Elaine dynamic that was different than the weird Tom thing where she was like flirting with him. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um uh, I was looking forward to that, but unfortunately, they don't really have much interactions. He kind of just ignores her. So I think we'll get that. I think I that it so. just has to build up to it. I think it's going to take a little bit of time, mm-hmm. um, and I think that once everyone finds out that Morghese is alive, it's going to change all of these people's relationships. Also, yes. once Rand eventually makes it to Saladar and tells everyone, "Oh, yeah, no, Morghese was like being mind controlled by a literal Forsaken." Yeah, I think that at that point. Um, a lot of these relationships are going to change. The one that I'm most curious about is Gareth Bryan's obsession with Sawan and how that is affected when he finds out that Morghese was alive the whole time yeah. and that Morghese didn't want to push him away, that she was forced to buy By Raven. the one power. I know. And that's why it's... Uh, there's going to be a reckoning. Like, Raven really left a just path of destruction because... Mm-hmm. Well, because people believe Morghese to be dead, and now Morghese is in this, like, really terrible situation, which we'll get to later. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, like, how it looks for Rand, you know? Like, people... Well, yeah, a lot of people think that he killed Morghese. Yeah. 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 And also, uh, the, the fact that Morghese doesn't know that she was being controlled, even with Robin dead, like, there was no, like, severing of that connection, that the, like, compulsion mm-hmm. almost still, like, carries past that like that that is mm-hmm. that that's uh, it's yeah it's super icky and uh, it's weird Josh Timco thank you Josh, for that super chat Thank you thank you for Appreciate t- it Super chat we appreciate it Cheers So we move on to uh well actually Elaine hangs out with um a couple Aes Sedai who are like really complimentary to her because not only are they like n- taking little bits of information out of Mogadian's brain here not mm-hmm. literally they're like asking her questions uh, and torturing her when she doesn't answer them. Um, mm-hmm. Complicated. Uh, Elaine is making tarangrials. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool that she's like the first person to be able to do it. Um, and, uh, you know, all the I said I are like super stoked. They're like, hey, this is great. Don't forget you're still a piece of shit accepted. But like but, also, good job. But here's the thing. Like I, I wish that it was, um, I wish that it was built on. Elaine, I still wish Elaine had been the one to figure out how to open the Adams in the first book Me or in too. the in the Great Hunt. Yeah, because I think that it would have like carried over as an arc so strongly. Yeah, and I think it's so funny that we immediately called that out about Elaine in mm-hmm. that book. Yeah, uh, and then we've gotten to this point when we're like, oh yeah, we <clears> called it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah. But yeah. it is what it is, and uh, I like Elaine making Tarang girls a lot. I think it's cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Elaine definitely has that superpower of being able to, like, observe things in her mind in, like, a 3D, like, yeah. space. <laughs> Something that I definitely don't have. Mm-hmm. Like, um, it's, it's, it's really mm-hmm. cool to see, and, and I think it's going to definitely play a big part of whatever's happening here. Um, you know, and it's funny, she's like... <laughs> No, I'm, I failed. I made some shitty ones. It's like, yeah, but you're the first person ever to be able to actually make one. So, like, you know, be nice to yourself. Yeah. 
Also, you're making them and you don't know how, which is ridiculous. Crazy. I know. I love it. Um, uh, so, uh, Sean Vieira says, uh, I wonder if Elaine will be the Adam opener on the show. Problem is that they're, they're ball gags, so all you have to do is, like, take them out on the show. You just have to, like, <gasps> you're good to go. Yeah, we'll see about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll figure that out. Yeah. I don't, uh, I don't so know Min, so the uh, the ice that are sending Min to spy on Rand, which she's not going to do. No. And uh, they both confess that they love Rand. Well, they knew that already. Yeah, but they both confess it. I wrote down that they're both like, "I love him. I love him too." But let's stay friends. Yeah, fair enough. There's no way that goes wrong. Uh, and then they like chill. They're like, "Can we just like sit and like not talk about Rand for like 20 minutes and like just be friends?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you know what? I I'm here for that. I like it. So we cut over to Fayil. We're finally, after an entire goddamn novel, uh-huh. we get back in the three two seconds of Perrin. <laughs> <laughs> Not even from his POV. So Fael is chilling on the manor throne of falcons that has been built for her by the artisans of faraway lands because mm-hmm. the two rivers is changing, y'all. We have a, we have come back to a two rivers that is a wildly different place. Mm-hmm. People are streaming from all over across the lands. Uh, through the Mountains of Mist, and they are landing in the two rivers and becoming part of this community that is growing so fast. Mm -hmm. uh, Faster than I think that people are ready for, um, based on the fact that there's a lot of complaints. And uh, Perrin, my good boy, my favorite, is doing what I would do, which is saying, I am, I, no, you handle it. I do not want to talk to people. Yeah. I do not like other humans. <laughs> yeah, I think if that were like us in that situation, it would be the same. You would like go and hide in a room. No, somewhere. if it was actually us, I would be sitting in that chair all day and you would get overwhelmed and you would leave. No? Yes. Yes, you would. No. Not if it was, like, right in front of me. Look, DMs overwhelm me because, like, there's also a million things to do. But if I had if I had a scheduled time where I was, like, here for something, I feel like I'm pretty good no, at no, that. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's not the, like, having to be there. It's mm-hmm. the having to make decisions. It'd be more so that, like... You would make one decision and you'd be like, I made my one decision <laughs> for the day. And they'd be like, Clarus, what, we need an answer. And you would sit there and go... Um, no, no. And then you would look to me. But you it, asked me what shoes you should wear last night, and then I chose your shoes, and you complained about them all night. I wanted an opinion. Here's the thing. I would probably sit in that chair, and these two people would come up to me and be like, we both like this guy. Who does he belong to? And I'd be like, you're fucking idiots. Get out of my sight. And so I would just be really bad at the yeah, job. Yeah, but you can't do that as a lord. You have to make decisions. Yeah, no, I would be like, you're an idiot. I know. I hate you. So I would end up being the one sitting there doing the work because yeah. I can make a decision in less than six <laughs> hours. And nothing else would ever get done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's very cool. This whole, like, I think that, do you think it's going to be like Manethrin 2.0? Uh, no. No? Okay. No, I don't, I, I don't think it, I think it's going to get burned down before then. Oh, okay. I think the Two Rivers gets burned down before the final battle. Really? Even yeah. though the way gates are closed? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, I think honestly, like, I think that there's going to be a big battle there and a lot. Like, I don't think that, I don't think that the final battle is far enough away for them to build a kingdom there. You know what I mean? I mean, people are, people are trickling in, like, Yeah, but they're still building business. buildings out of wood. You know what I mean? Like, I, Menethrin was a giant stone kingdom made by the Ogier. It sure. Was, but. That's decades. But they do have an Ogier, and also, they're starting to put tile on their roofs. Okay, but they have Loyal. Yes. Loyal's not about to build. Excuse me. Loyal is not going to stay in the two rivers and build buildings while Perrin is off doing Tavirin shit. No. Loyal is going to bring his book. He's going to bring his little notes. Yes. And he's going to follow Perrin to the Dragon Reborn. And he's going to call his buddies because his mom's eventually going to find out what he's up to. I don't know. His we mom is on the other side chapter. of the world. No, she's going <laughs> to find out. Moms always do. And he's she's he's going <laughs> to call his mom, be like, Mom, we need to build Perrin a big old castle. And the Ogier are going to be like, yes, absolutely. Matrix says I would lock myself out during the audience. And that that is true. Yes. Good call. What's crazy is I still don't know how I locked myself out. Um, oh, it's because I went out the front the door buzzer. and I didn't have the buzzer. Right, yes. Right, 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 mm-hmm. right, right. So the front door was unlocked. Right, right. Yes. Uh, so uh, there, there's some there's some interesting things going on in the two rivers. Um, all the wise women are arguing about which uh, dressmaker should make Fayol's gowns, and Fayol's like, "We're not gonna have a ball. I don't need a gown." Literally, like, when do I have time to plan a party? Like- um, Sen Bui is complaining about uh, mm-hmm. uh, the 
uh, tile roofs because he's a thatch work roof maker. Yeah. Uh, and Fael's like, oh, yeah, uh, that's interesting because you haven't finished my roof. You want to finish my roof? And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 got that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to get that right now. Um, James Smith. James Smith, thank you for the thank super chat. Thank you for that super chat. Thank you for signing my birthday off right. Nerdy and Clark's talking about the Wheel of Time. Happy Loyal birthday. is a tree singer, not a stone worker. I, <laughs> I know that. You have to tell this one. They're going to make a wooden castle. You know how dope that would be? Yeah, it's flammable. No, it would be so terrible. No, it would look really cool. Turbot, okay? thank you. Uh, people were upset at the show for being multicultural. This is the point in the story where it starts being appropriate, and this is why some are upset about it. I understand that. This moment won't happen in the show, but also the show won't have time for this anyway. So, so yes. Yeah. They, they're, they're literally not going to have time. <laughs> Eric says, decision time, thatch or tile. Mm. Uh, I I like shingles. No, you know what I want my roof to be? It's a weird thing to say. What? Um, what do you want your roof to be? Why is that weird to say? I shingles is a disease to me. It's just that's what okay, I think. Shingles of. are also. <laughs> I know. Roof it's work. Just... Um. Uh, honestly, I like um solar panels. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you guys for those super chats. Thank you for those super chats. Solar is a good idea, but nobody's um, figured that out. That'll be the next Adam that Elaine makes, or not Adam, Terangriel that she makes. <laughs> she creates electricity. Yeah, she creates solar <laughs> solar right. panels. I love it. Um, uh, I liked... That was three super chats. Oh my god, that was three super chats. Here you go. Cheers. Uh, Solar Shingles from 3M Ad plays now. Just kidding, we're not sponsored by 3M. We would be, though. 3M, we use a lot of your products, so give us money. <laughs> so give and then us we'll money. we'll give it back to you. The problem with a lot of the people who sponsor us is they pay us, and then, like, like we were sponsored by HelloFresh for yeah. a while, and then we just ended up spending all the money they sent us on HelloFresh. Worth it though. Some of Worth those it. recipes were that Good pork food. Salisbury yeah. was not currently sponsored, but uh, I still to... recommend them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Fayil Fayil deals with all of this. The the dresses, the wise women. The, uh -huh. There's the one poor wise woman. I can't remember which one it is. I think it's Mila Alazar who like isn't really a wise woman. She oh, needs she's to, like, from Terran Ferry. Yeah, she needs to. She needs to get a backbone here. I don't if, think if she's gonna start spanking everybody in town, <laughs> like Naini wants to. Um, Yes. Here's the thing. You know, the T Terran Ferry burned down. They didn't have much to choose from. Oh, no, no, no. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's new to it, but she needs she needs to, like, button up quick. Yep. Um, or else those other girls, they're going to trot all over her, and I don't want to see that happen to my girl Mila. You know what I mean? All right. I don't want to say that. She's our new favorite character, apparently. Yeah, she's my new parent. Um, no, she's my not. My new parent. So, parent, uh, so Fayil <laughs> finishes the audience. Guys, we're still in the prologue. I think it's going to take us an hour to get through the prologue. Probably, yeah. Um, so <laughs> this is going to be a long episode today. Bear with us. So um, we're also going to get drunk. It's going to get sloppy. Let's go. Um, Not me. I'm never sloppy. So Fayil uh, is like, yo, where the heck is my new husband? Um, I'm horny. <laughs> where is my new husband? Um, uh, I love the like offhand comment about like when she's going to provide an heir. And I was like. Mm -hmm. No, the, she wasn't asked about that this time. This time. She had been asked but about like, that in the past. she thought about it. No, I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Gotta love that. Um, and so uh, Fayul goes to um, where she knows Perrin is going to be, which is watching Tam and Aram fight. Yeah, Aram is, is uh, basically a Heron Blade Master at this point. Yeah, he's going at it. Yeah, it's been like three months, and he's like, you know what? I got this. Yeah. And, and you know what? Good for him. Yeah. If you're gonna commit to something, commit to something. Sure. You know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um. And uh, what's what's crazy to me is that Perrin is like looking off, and he's like, "Oh yeah, his uh, family's over there, not watching." Yeah. <sighs> De like deliberately like looking anywhere else. And and the the interesting thing is is do you think the Tinkers are gonna end up staying? I don't know. I I I don't know. I think. At least some of them will. I don't. I think that once Perrin leaves, they'll leave. I think that once Perrin leaves, things are going to get worse in Two Rivers. I have a question for you. This mm -hmm. is jumping ahead a little bit, but it relates to this moment, so okay. bear with me for a moment. Do you think that Matt knows the song? No. Okay. No, because he's he doesn't have any memories before the break-in. Uh, well, does he not? Not we've not yet no. seen him remember anything before the breaking. No, that's that's fair, at least specifically. The only the only person we know who has seen no, he has time memories. before the breaking is Rand. Rand knows the song. 
Guys, Rand knows the song. Rand learned, le or he didn't learn it, but he heard the song when he was in Rivian. Was that the song? Yeah, it's the song they sing to make uh, the plants grow. Rand knows the song. I think Matt knows it as well. He just doesn't know it yet. <clears throat> I think mm. so. But you're right, yeah, Rand heard the song. I think Matt also knows it. And they're, they're just going to like be humming it to themselves one day, and the other one's going to be like... Someone was shouting at us in the chat, but a mod deleted it. So, <laughs> um, Jake Hendricks, thank you for that super chat. Thank you. Cheers. We're Cheers. glad you can make it live. Let's go. Yeah. Smash that like button if you're here, y'all. If you're here, why not? Why, why not, not like the video? Takes like two why seconds. Methodist Methodist cat. <laughs> thank you for the super chat. Um, I'm glad we know your cat's name now. I feel like we're on a first name basis. So. Uh, the cat Sammy would like us to consider that let the Lord of Chaos rule should be the official model of this professional podcast. You know what? Done. Yeah. Nerdy Wordy Book Club, let the Lord of Chaos rule. Yeah, you know, if Metheny's cat says so, I think I think we can make that happen. Um, thank you, thank you guys. Yeah, so no, Rand has definitely heard the song of the mm. song of, of of growing plants. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just when, when later on when Matt's like dancing and he remembers all this like musical stuff, I was like, I wonder if Matt knows the song. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Anyways, back to the prologue. Um, <laughs> God damn. We're like halfway through the prologue, maybe? So yeah, um, Perrin turns to Fayil and he's like, um... I gotta go. I love you. I do. Uh, but, uh, Rand, uh... I love you, I do, do. Rand is tugging on me. And not in a fun way. Uh, and I, I gotta go, girl. Um, you know, he tur he's like, you know, it's, it's time for me to go to war. Uh, and you're gonna stay here and, um run the two rivers and she's like no what and she he's like well yeah like if the lord leaves the lady has to like take care of shit yeah and that's Fayel's your like, job mm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. she's like i mean yeah kind of but like i'm not gonna do it yeah literally well and it's it's fun that we find out later because rand has um well oh, she's i know that his name is bashir but the people are uh, saldan saldan that the saldans take i their really wives. hate I, can i just say really quick the Sa Saladar and, and Saldea. I, uh, yeah, it's in my. It hurts my brain. Rude. 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 Robert Jordan. Um, but we find out that Saldeans uh, traditionally take their wives with them um, when campaigning and things like that, like generals mm -hmm. and lords and such. And so, it, it's um, just a little insight onto Fael's perspective of what's happening here, which is very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, parents like go to a place nearby. I gotta go. Uh, and Fayel's like he, he he didn't say I couldn't go, and I was like, he, he told you to stay. I okay. Yeah. I don't know how you're gonna she get like, around that one. He almost said it was too dangerous, <laughs> like, girl. All right. Uh, I do quite like Fayel in this uh, this 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 part though. Um, I think it was well done. Oh no, I really like Fayel and Perrin here, and I totally get like the Taviran is pulling at him. He, there's nothing he can do about it, right? Yeah. Um, and the Taviran let him go when he had his own thing that he had to go accomplish, mm -hmm. and now that he went and accomplished that thing, he has to go again. Mm -hmm. uh, I also the the moment in the prologue where they were like there were two I said I here mm -hmm. until recently, I was like, ooh, what happened to uh, Alana and Varen? And uh, this is gonna be the first time on this podcast today that I say, hey Varen, fuck you, or uh, no, Varen's fine, Alana. Fuck you. Yeah. Um, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> we'll get to that later. That's a little tease for later in the podcast when I get very upset about a woman. Um, wow. Cheers, everybody. It does not happen often. So we jump over to the Aes Sedai, but not those Aes Sedai. We jump over uh -huh. to just outside the tent of the White Towers Aes Sedai as they're heading towards Camelin. And this is uh, the point of view of the younglings. <laughs> You know, those children that Anakin murdered. I literally, that's, yeah, when they were called the younglings, I was like, oh, they're all dead. And then we get At further, some point, Rand is going to kill them all with his lightsaber. With his sword that he, like, magic. The fire one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, the younglings will all be killed. When Rand goes crazy, mm -hmm. he will kill the younglings, and it will be the most Star Wars moment of this entire book series. Oh, my God. So is it going to be, like, a weird, like, Romeo and Juliet moment if she kill if he kills Gawain, and Elena's like, you killed my brother, but you're still hot. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. We've got a Romeo and Juliet and Star Wars crossover. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah, the younglings are all gonna die. <coughs> all, like, I, I know it. Mm -hmm. Um, I, <laughs> that is my prediction. If I'm wrong, whatever, well, I don't think I'm wrong. Well, because both sides want them dead. 
Yes, literally. Like the Aes Sedai are like, oh, we need to find a way to kill them. Yeah, they're yeah. like, we need to find a way to get rid of them. And oh, they're all screwed. They're all screwed. Gawain. But Gawain doesn't know that. Gawain <laughs> is just in love with Egwene. And so is sticking by the White to Tower because in the hopes that, that it will bring Egwene back to him. I don't know if... I didn't read it as he wa he was trying to get with Egwene and that was why. I read it as like he he loved her and she cares about this thing and he wanted to preserve it. Like he... He loves her and he wants to be her warder. Yes. Yes. In the biblical sense. <laughs> I, okay, I, I made a tweet and I think people are very upset. I think Gowan is an amazing character. Oh, super fascinating. This is, this, this part for me, I was like, Gowan, you poor sweet boy. I, uh, oh man, I hurt poor for you. Books. What? Gowan wants to ward her brains out. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, I love, yeah, a warder in a biblical sense. Mm -hmm. um, incredible. Yeah. Uh, I Here's the thing. The, uh, Gowan is going to be a very complicated character. Yeah, he will. Um, and it's going to be interesting, unless he, he dies right Yeah, away. it's going to be fantastic, which is why I don't really understand the Gowan hate right now. Because um, he keeps making bad decisions. But not bad in his mind. Like, I mean, everyone thinks that they're making the right decision. Oh, sure, sure. But from the, the audience's perspective. Well, but here's yeah. the thing. With the information that Gowan had... He I, took it a little bit far. I can't tell you where your sister is. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm going to help get you um, stilled and uh, executed. But, that That is an extreme. But then he that is let an extreme. her live. Like he... Sure, sure, sure. No, no, no. He did. Yeah. Yeah. I don't but he think... also joined a rebellion that broke the White Tower because he was upset that Swan but, wouldn't tell him where his sister was. But here's the thing. Do you think that he backed a rebellion that... Do you think he went into this thinking he was backing a rebellion that was going to immediately still and kill her? Or do you think he thought he was backing a rebellion that would put Suan on trial so he could find out where his sister is and then if she was found guilty would then be dealt with accordingly? I think that if that is what he thought, then it's a naive thing to do and that he is responsible for being naive in that situation. Sure. Definitely. And that does not mean he's not interesting. Yeah. But it does mean that he is easily manipulated. And I understand yeah. why people can be like, yo, if you're going to keep ending up in these situations where you are being manipulated into literally being the protectors of dark friends here. Yeah. Like we find out in the next point of view that Gawain is literally okay. being manipulated but at he every turn. doesn't know that. He will do any, he is 100%. sister. He, 100%. When he thinks his sister is dead, he, he, like his world is shattered, right? Like he's, he believes that his sister is in danger and that the only he way. He believes she's dead. No, it, at the end of this part, he does. No, he he hears a rumor. He acknowledges it's a rumor. He acknowledges it's a rumor, but he was like, rumors have a way of ending up to be true. He thinks that she's yeah. dead. But previously, with, with Elaine, he thinks that the only chance that he has of getting answers out of Swan and finding out what happened to his sister is if Swan is put on trial. And so I think, I don't I don't know if Gawain understood fully what he was backing up, right? Oh, like, no, no, 100%. I agree totally with that. He was totally manipulated. I'm saying that, but... like, he is... He has a lot of power and mm -hmm. a lot of charisma, mm -hmm. and he is a character who does not have the intelligence and wisdom mm -hmm. to see that he's being manipulated almost constantly by the people above him. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he keeps making decisions that put other people in danger because of his naivete. I feel like And that's he's... interesting, Yeah. but it is also his character flaw, is that he is led by the nose by... And whoever can lead him by the nose gets to lead him by the nose. I feel like... Elaine I... does it when yeah. we first meet him. Yeah. Then Swan does it. Mm -hmm. Then when he gets upset that Swan won't tell him everything, he gets mm -hmm. pissy, and now Aleda and these two dark friends are doing it. Yeah. Gawain is a character who has a lot of strength, is an incredible swordsman, Mm -hmm. but will believe literally anything anyone tells him because he is so insecure. And his yeah. insecurities and his love for Egwene are allowing people to just manipulate him into whatever they want him to do. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, he, he, has, he has no, like, he has no sense for the fact that he is just a follower. I, I guess it goes back to me, like, it, it goes back to, like, Gowan being the most relatable character for me. Or I'm like that would be me. No, I would you want... do not. Let, you do not let people push you around at all. I'm a very <laughs> look. I try and see the best in people and like take them at face value. 
And in today's modern society, I think that maybe that that is a benefit, sometimes a detriment. But in this world, it's very clearly uh, just naivety, and that it's unfortunate. But yeah. I just, I, yeah, I, there's so much about Gawain that I've been able to relate to, and it's it's sad that a lot of people hate him, and I, I, I don't know where his story is going, but I'm kind of nervous. Oh, I don't hate him, but I, no, I'm definitely but in the camp of, like, dude. That do, yes. Dude. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. yeah. You, just, like, think for yourself a little bit. Yeah, the problem is, like, I like I get it. Yeah. I no, get I, it. I get it. I get it. I just, I don't love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he, he is the lame version of Matt. The lame version? Yeah, because they're both leading their, like, merry band of men, but Matt's being rad about it, and Gawain, I'm like, come on. Matt doesn't trust anyone, though. Yeah, I know. He shouldn't. Oh, you mean <laughs> they literally both are leading... They're, they're, in the, they're in the same position on opposite sides of the fight, right? Oh. They're both leaders of their, like, band of men who follow them because of their charisma, but where Matt is doing it from a position of, I don't trust anyone and I'm going to do my best by my men. Mm. Gowan is doing it from a position of, I will do whatever anyone tells me. Yeah, they're definitely different, like, in opposition. And, like, Gowan has, like, serious, like, younger brother syndrome. Really? Oh, a thousand percent. Gowan lives in Galad's shadow, like, the, uh, like, just constantly. He doesn't seem to be that salty about it, though. It, younger brother syndrome isn't about being salty about it. It's oh. it's, it's a personality trait of, um, it, it, he's he has a lack of steadfastness in his decision making, hmm. and he's easily swayed by outside factors. Whereas Galad mm -hmm. saw what was going on in the White Tower and made the choice yeah. to leave and go join the opposite faction because he thought it was the right thing and he didn't want to be manipulated by the White Tower, right? Yeah. And so that that the Galad and Gawain, Gawain they come at it from two Galad different points of view. Galad and Gwen, uh, they come at it from the two points of view, whereas Galad is making decisions for himself uh -huh. and based on his creed, which he is so steadfast by. Yeah. And he is, he's so committed to how he sees the world that he yeah. will do anything to live as Galad. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the flip side, Gawain is so easily manipulated by everyone around him. Yes. And he's incredibly charismatic, right? Yeah, 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 Ga yeah. I get why people follow Gawain, yeah. but Gawain will follow anyone. Yeah. And, and that's like that younger brother syndrome. He yeah, wants yeah. to be kind of led... Uh, and it's, it's interesting. It's, it's, he makes him an interesting character, but he's not my favorite character because of it. Cause I'm like, oh my God, someone's going to manipulate you into doing something stupid and it's going to get you killed. And it's yeah. probably going to get the younglings killed too. And like Anakin, yes. you know what? <laughs> Do it. Just, just take him out. Jen the Bell, welcome back to the nerd table. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for seven months. What would Gala Gowan's highest and lowest stats be in D&D? Charisma's Strength. highest. Well, yeah, maybe charisma. Maybe dexterity. Honestly, well, actually, he's so good with he's so good with like single sword combat. Dexterity would probably be really high. Honestly, that's true. I would actually say that his. Oh, it, it, so in in D and D, you can either if you have a finesse weapon, then your highest stat could be dexterity. But if it's if it's a sword, just a normal sword, it would have to be strength. Just by D and D. Yeah, standards. D and D doesn't understand how sword combat works. Sure, <laughs> sure, 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 sure. I'm just saying. Um, like, so, the only the only swords that are, like, strength weapons are two-handed swords. Yeah. Like, a, any any rapier, any sort of, like... Or, like, big battle axes, war hammers. Yeah, that's that a strength weapon, but, mm -hmm. like, the majority of sword combat is finesse. I I would agree with that. Um, I think it's just for the gameplay, they had to, you know, they had to do something with strength. I would say wi his wisdom's in the toilet, though. Yes, I think his wisdom is the lowest. I don't mm -hmm. think it's, like, in the negatives. But he's also raised um, rich, so his intelligence would be okay because he would have been, He's um, been like... well-educated, for sure. His intelligence is probably fairly high. Yeah. Wisdom, lowest. I think, yeah, depending on what he's using for his, so, like, for for his, um, like, attack abilities, either strength or dexterity. And then, yeah, charisma, second highest. We're halfway through the prologue. Great, we're halfway through the it's prologue. It's been an hour, and we're halfway through the prologue. So, uh -huh. um, uh, basically, the, the Shido show up to talk to the Aes Sedai from the White Tower, which, uh, poor decision-making. Uh, hey, Ida, thank you for that super Ida, chat. Ida, thank you for the super chat. It is thank important you. to remember, Gawain has been raised to follow his sister and be the prince of the sword, yes. and he has done Lena all his life. I was actually oh, going to yeah, yeah. say, it he is, was raised to be manipulated. It, it, was, it is very easy to forget that Gawain has known Elena for a very long time, and as much as the, he doesn't like her, he knows his mom listened to her and trusted her and probably tried to bring some of that into his decision-making as well. So it, I just think oh, he's no, a he really... Was, he was raised to be manipulated. Yeah, I think like he's that, a really that's who he is as a person. fascinating character, yeah. which is just why I don't really understand why people like hate him as a character, but I, maybe that's I, we'll get to that point, I guess. Oh, I don't hate him. 
I, I'm just saying, like, he was raised to be manipulated, and you can watch him constantly be manipulated. Yeah. And so it's it just makes him less uh, steadfast than mm -hmm. other characters that we're reading right now. Yeah. Um. So we cut to inside that tent, um, and the White Tower. Uh, the White Tower agrees on an alliance with the Shido. Dumb move. Yeah. This is not. This is going to end poorly for every single person involved. Well, especially because we find out that Katrin, the Aes Sedai involved, uh, and Galena. The yeah. other I said I involved, both Who's the, Black Aja. Who is also the head of the Red Aja. The secret head of the Reds. I liked that. I liked that people were like, oh, everyone thought that Aleda was the head of the Reds. No, it's Galena. Nope. Who is Black Aja. Yeah. And I am not surprised. Not surprised in the slightest. You're telling me the head of the Red Aja is uh, evil? Uh, the ones who Shocking. set up Loghain to be the Dragon Reborn? <laughs> Shocking. I would have never seen that coming. Um, we don't get much time with them. We just kind of realized, wow. What? Kate, that's, no. T let's move the head. Change the story. Okay. There. Oh my god, that is still so much. Put orange juice in it. It'll taste great. Jesus Christ. My husband's trying to get me drunk. Always. Um, which is funny because we don't drink very often. We don't. Um. Um, 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 yeah, so they're they're yeah. evil. Yeah. I, th yeah. Yeah, not much happens. We don't really find out what their plan is, but I can tell you it's probably not good. Although there's a lot of people who, like, um, said that they would fan cast me as Savannah, and I'm really interested to see how much of a role she has to play in, uh... James, thank you for being a Narg! <gasps> Yay, thank you for being a Narg. Cheers! Cheers. 10K. <laughs> We, we do our best. <laughs> we're we... we're going to need to eat food as soon as the stream is done. Yes, we are definitely going to need to eat food. I'm glad I had Tim Hortons this morning because I... Oh, you ate already. I, I have I not... I knew we were drinking champagne, so I, I took care of myself. Fair enough. I, I have not eaten, so this is going to be very You're going to be so drunk by the time we get to the first chapter. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, the, I, the, so they're evil. Uh-huh. Um, and um, the, we're not sure... that well, They're not sure what their plan is for Rand yet, but... Yeah, Very no curious. one really knows what they're doing. It really just seems kind of like they're everyone's floundering and and grasping at straws, which is great. I actually, I think it. it the, I don't know what's gonna happen here, and uh, that's scary but exciting. I also love that they're like, we're bringing six Aes Sedai. That's like a lot of honor. Yeah, and I'm like, I, so much honor. Is it because the first time the Aes Sedai came to Rand, it was like <laughs> 19 people. Yeah. Step one, capture Rand. Step two. Step three, profit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where we're at right now. Um, and they don't know that Rand has the super Sa'angreal who and might be able to overpower them with it. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. I don't yeah. know where it is though. It's hidden somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's probably just like in a wall. Yeah. How much of how what percentage of the Aes Sedai do you think are Black Aja? Uh like twenty percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like I'm excited for when we find out who in Saladar is Black Aja. Because there's no way, there's no way no. the Black Aja didn't, like, no run with them. Yes, yes, yes. There, yeah. No, there's definitely some, don't know who it is yet, but they're, they're definitely there. Um, I hope it's not Morel. Could you imagine if it was and Lan is, like, bonded to a Black Aja? Uh, yeah, I could see it. I also hope it's not Alana. Because uh, now would be a good time. YouTube is saying now would be a good time to insert ads, but I'm going to say now is a good time to say fuck to you, say, Alana. Fuck you, Alana. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> so we cut uh, we cut uh, to the outside of the tent. We're kind of doing this weaving of like point of views through this point here, where Savannah is like, um, we're we're gonna we're gonna help them. I don't really know what Savannah's doing, guys. This didn't make any. I don't nobody, really understand what the Shido are doing here. Nobody has a plan. Um, they just they they just want revenge, basically. Um, what's happening? But basically, Savannah was given a. A cube by a strange wetlander uh, and is going to use it on Rand. And who do you think that is? Padden Fane. Yes, Padden Fane. Right? Yeah. It's uh, got to be Padden Fane. That was my guess as well. I'm like a strange, like, you know, like an odd person who's a wetlander who just so happens to want to take down Rand. Who has access to, to Rand Grails because he's in the White Tower. Yes. Like, it just, it, it made too much sense for it to be Rand. How he got there... No or to idea. be Padden Fane, sorry. To be, yes, yes. He can use the ways. True. He's still able to use the ways. That's I how he gets around. That. No, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, Padden Fane, I think, gives Savannah a box. A yeah, cube. a cube. So, that'll be fun. I don't know what the hell that does. Yeah, I'm assuming it's like the Adam that um, they found in Tenchiko. 
But it's a cube? I guess we'll see. It's just a massive die. He wants to play D&D &D with her. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, I would love for Elaine to start making triangle girls that are like 20-sided die. And if you yes. roll a one, you die. Yeah, Padden Fane is a Borg. Confirmed. <laughs> Padden Fane is a Borg? Yes, he's been experimented on. And he has the cubes. Um, <laughs> he's going to be assimilated. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> Oh, I, that's that's God. that's what's gonna happen at the end of this book. I'm calling it now. A spaceship is gonna land, and this is gonna become an alien invasion story. <gasps> Storm D knows what it is. It's a dick in the box. <laughs> Thank God. A dick in a box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A dick in a box. Um, and then we get to Nile. No nope. more gays. More gays first. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. The... Um, so more gays is in uh, Altara. We can find out about aliens. I think we can skip through this a little bit. Morghese is there. She wants Elrond to do stuff for her. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll get to that. I'll get to that. You want to you wanna hang out again tomorrow? And she's like, yeah. Can you please just give me a goddamn army? Yep. And then she's like, he leaves. And she's like, oh, man. And then Pedro Nile like bursts in. And she's like, you could fucking knock. What happened to my boys? And he's like, they're fine. They were knocked out. Very aggressive, Pedro Nile. You could have knocked. Like, I don't really understand why Pedro Nile didn't knock here. Then Pedro Nile basically threatens her and is like, eventually you're going to let the White Cloaks into Caneland so that you can have your throne back. And then Morghese is like, eh, maybe, oh, God damn it, now I'm a prisoner of Pedro Nile and there's nothing I can do about it. Boom. Basically. Two point of views down. Okay. Masanas. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Welcome to the nerd table. Speak easy. Let's Speak go. easy, B. Thank you for that. Cheers. Do you have anything to add to the Morghese Pedro Nile discourse I just threw out there? Uh, no, because we do come back to that later and it does get um, much more interesting. We'll come back to it later. But. Basically, um, Morghese is there. And also, she's got the hots for Talonvor. Um, I also, love that she, like, screams at everyone. Anyways. Also, yeah. a young man shows up who I, I didn't. I, 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 I Guys, blanked so hard on this. Nerdy did not catch this. I, last night, I was like... <gasps> Speakeasy V, thank you so much for five gifted memberships. Speakeasy, thank what you. Are, what are you guys doing? Cheers. 10K. So generous. Let's Franklin, go. Terrence, Logic Saul, and James Ross, welcome to the nerd table, everyone. Thank you. We appreciate that a lot. Um, Pater yeah. shows up. Yeah. And I, I had completely forgotten his name. Yeah, I was like, it's so wild that, like, Pater comes back and you're like, who? It's like, like the, who's... like, F-tier dark friend from book one. Yeah. He's leveled up. You know, he's the probably, like, D-tier now. Do you think that he actually has a uncle? Uh, I'm sure he's not his actual uncle. I'm sure he's another dark friend. It's Demandred. His uncle Pater, is Pater and Demandred just, you know... Riding that rock and convoy across the USA. <laughs> Nothing would ever get done. No, there's no way. Yeah, um, Pater's back. Yeah, Pater's like, my uncle can help you. Amazing that he's alive, considering uh, we met him going, I'm a dark friend in the yeah. middle of a bar. Yeah. I think the White Cloaks would have caught him at some point. but You would think so, but they're also very bad at their jobs. They're wasting time on all the innocent women that they're torturing. Uh, so then we catch up with Pedro Nile uh, mm -hmm. back at the Fortress of Light. Or Fortress of the Light, which is a dope name for a fortress. Um, even though it holds people who maybe aren't on the side of the light. And um, we basically find out that Pedro Nile has a fake spy master and a real spy master. Very and cool. This is a moment where I was like, God damn, I don't like that I like Pedro Nile. I know, he's so smart, even though he sucks. But he did get manipulated by Ordeath, so I have like one thing I can like ding him for. Um, well, we'll see. Did he gave he a really lot of power get... to get, he gave a lot of power to Ordeath. He gave yeah. him white cloaks. He gave him power, you know? Um, mm. But, uh, yeah, we find out that um, Balwer... Um, Balwer is kind of a dum-dum. And then Keridin... <laughs> or no, Keridin's a dum-dum. Yeah, and yeah, Balwer's yeah. the... Balwer is yeah, the yeah. actual spy master. Um, What's funny, though, is that he's calling... He, like, Keridin's, like, um, saying some stuff. Mm -hmm. And Pedro Nile's like, you're, a, you're an idiot. None of yep. that is true. And, like, a lot of what he says is true. <laughs> Well, it's... It's just so unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. But it is what is happening. Well, and here's the thing is he he has no proof for it either. It's literally just that he will believe anything that anyone says to him. Yeah. Uh, so I love that. I He reminded me of um, Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist. Mm, good call. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is exactly what I pictured. Um, no, I was right the first time. Omima is... Omima is the fake spy master. Keridin is the real spy master. Uh, and Keridin no, is Bors. Keridin is Bors? No, Balwer. Has Nerdy played Elden Ring, the reference to Commander Nile at Castle Sol? Yes, we called that out when we met him the first time. Um, yeah. George R. R. Martin throwing in the reference to Nile into Elden Ring. 
chef's kiss. That's how you show some respect to your friend. That's how you keep his legacy on. You reference him in arguably the biggest video game of the year. Also, that um, Commander Nile fight, one of the hardest fights in the game. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's hard. Commander Nile is a beast. Wait, I've got this all wrong. Omima is the best. Okay. Uh, Samantha A, think of that super chat. Fun fact. One on Audible, this prologue is labeled opening credits, and it's two hours and 51 minutes. <laughs> opening oh credits. Oh, my God. Samantha. But it's basically what it is. It's just meeting people. Are you for real? That's wild. Wait, does this happen? Yeah. What? Wait, do we don't get, do we get- No, Keridin is waiting for, Keridin is waiting outside. Omima, Omima's there. Him and Omima chat. Oh, who is Omima? Isn't that the fake spy master? No. What's the fake spy master's name? They're saying it's Omima. Omemer and Baller. I don't know. Omira. Sure. <laughs> I was like, who's Omima? I was like, oh, peep it? Like- Omerna. Whatever. Guys, I'm <laughs> dyslexic. I can't read. I, this is a book club where we read. I understand that that may be a that might not make sense. A book club where you read? What? Okay. Yes. Okay. Ball. I know Balwer is the real one. Yes. Omerna is the fake one. Yes. Balwer is the real one, and Keridin is outside. Keridin is Bors. Yeah. 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 The dark. Yeah. yeah the dark <laughs> he's yes. the he's the leader Jai of Chim the questioners. Jiachim. Jai yeah. 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 Jiachim. Yeah. He is now Omimer. Giachi. Uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Basically, um, the uh, Dragon Sworn. Uh huh. A lot of those are Pedro Niles boys. Yeah. He's running Dragon Sworn. Yeah. Uh, uh, let the Lord of Chaos rule. Truly. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, I've called it. I just have to say, I called it, I think like a few weeks ago, where I was like, I think the Lord of Chaos might be Rand. I called that. We both did. I said that to you in the bedroom with the candlestick. What? Blue. Don't, don't. I called that first. No, we called it on the on the on the book club. I called it the, like two days before when I was reading it, though. No, I'm talking about weeks ago. Yeah, that was me. You're trying to. I I called. I was like in the bedroom. I was like, oh, I think it's Rand. No, no, no. I'm talking about on the. Yes, a few days. Yes, a few days. I'm talking about literally like a month ago, when we were talking about the next like title. I was like, the Lord of Chaos. I think that might be Rand. Oh, did you? I'm pretty sure. You know what? Doesn't matter. No, it does. If you if you called it first, then you called it first. It's important that remember. we get this. It does. We're never gonna remember. I yeah. Here's the did problem. anyone in the spoiler chat um uh pull that out uh and clip it to put it in the spoiler chat? Because I know I I don't even know. I just Clarice I feel called it. Like... No, you win. Okay, I take it back. I, I win. <laughs> you win. Oh my god. Put the candle I'm a back. Winner. God damn! I Where? thought that I thought that one was mine when I called it in the bedroom that one night. You have a little lipstick on with your tooth right there. Oh, no. Has it been there the whole time? Probably. Rude. Um, We cut over to Masana. I say it with long because it's Masana. Masana. Uh, new, uh, new, new Forsaken. A new Forsaken. New Forsaken. Very I'm, cool. Yeah. Lars like, wins again. I win she again, Luz Theron. The Lord of Chaos was the friends we made along the way. It was. Especially if we're calling <clears> our <throat> podcast the Lord of Chaos. Let the Lord of Chaos roll. Uh, so, um... Masana is um Misa Anna? That's too Jar Jar for me. That's that, I'm sorry, I'm gonna know. <laughs> Misa be Jar Jar Binks. <clears throat> <clears throat> Alright, so the she's chilling. Uh, uh mm -hmm. and uh uh Summer Hagi is there. Simmerhaj. Simmerhaj. Uh Simmerhaj is uh doing um like Messi Anna. Uh uh, uh needlework. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, and she's... Masana's playing with dominoes, and this is like, I was like, are the Forsaken in an old folks' home? Like, what retirement bullshit is this? They've yeah, they're they're old. They've been around for a long time. You know, they they have skills that they want to work on. When you have all the time in the world, <laughs> it's just so funny to meet these two villains, and they're fucking like knitting. <laughs> but it was it was terrifying. No, it wasn't. Yes, they're knitting. It's too normal. It's too casual. I hate it. I hate it. They're supposed to be evil, not relatable. <laughs> no, it was cool. I was like, Simmerhage, terrifying. <clears throat> Utterly yeah. terrifying. She, she's, was it like embroidery, I think it was? She I don't was, know. Here's the thing. 
it's something that is like so consistent with who she is as a villain. The like precision of the like healing but hurting, like of the the brain like stimulation sure. and the precision of like embroidery. Horrifying. Sure. I hated it. <laughs> All right. Um, we're at an hour and four minutes. We're crushing it. I love it. this for me. Um, mm-hmm. So Demandred shows up, and Demandred is like, yo, um, uh, where's everyone else? And then Graindel shows up, and they're like, is Samael coming? And they're like, no, Samael's a coward. <laughs> no. Uh, what did the Dark One say? We need to move a little bit quicker here. So the Dark One is like, yo, don't, um, don't, do, sh- don't do too much. Let the Lord of Chaos rule. And yeah. then I guess you called it that it's Rand. So they're like, let Rand mess shit up. Yeah. Even though I feel like Rand's doing a pretty good job right now, but... That's just me personally. Ooh, I don't also, know. my my prediction that the Forsaken were gonna like kidnap him or take him off the board this book definitely not happening now because nope. the Dark One said don't do anything. Yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was an interesting prediction though, but yeah, you were wrong. <laughs> also, um, they they want uh, an Angriel so uh-huh. that they can be more powerful, and I'm kind of like, they're not that hard to find. They're kind of everywhere. We've encountered a lot, I think, because our main characters are Tavarin. Yeah, that's fair. Right, like everything can kind of be explained by oh, they're Tavarin. Yeah, but I was like, Rand has like five. Yeah, yeah. The girls have a bunch. Like, there's, there's, there are Angriels everywhere. Yeah, you think Moraine they could just walk one. into Saladar and get one? Oh yeah, Moraine yeah. had one. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, interesting, right? Yeah. Um, but so I feel like the the Forsaken are going to be looking for um Angriels. This book. Yeah, which it, like it makes sense. You know, they're 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 way more wary of Rand now. They realize how powerful he is. He's obviously been able to kill a bunch of them. So they're like. We need all the help that we can get, I think. Uh, Vale says every salad bar has one. <laughs> That's actually my favorite thing on the salad bar is the Tarangriel. The Tarangriel? Yeah. Mm, you gotta try it. It's great. Um. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, the Forsaken are um, terrifying. Um, <laughs> Semiel sucks. And yeah, then... they don't know where each other is. I found that interesting that Masana was like, I wish I knew where like they were hanging out. Yeah. And we find out. We find out where most of them are by the end of this. Yeah. Um, but interesting that uh, by the end of the, the reading this week, we know, but they don't know where each other is, which I think is, like, yeah. very cool. I also love that people are like, yeah, we haven't seen Mogadin in a while, but that's not that unusual, so yeah. whatever. <laughs> but, oh, also, we find out that Semerhaj, um, Demandred, and Masana have a, like, alliance among the Forsaken. Yeah. They're like a little threesome among the 13-some. Hot. Yeah, you gotta, you know, find find your like-minded people. I kind of feel bad for Graindoll in this situation where she shows up and she's like, I'm not one of you, I know. <laughs> Can we get this meeting over with? Because I, I get it. Like, you three are friends and I'm just like the person that has to be here because our moms carpool together. <laughs> uh, and so... And then... We cut to the final... We are finally on the final point the of view. The final point. Of the prologue of The Lord of Chaos. And we get two new villains. This should have been its own episode. We should have prologue. done the prologue and then started the book the next week. I didn't realize. Here's the thing: is because we don't look at it to avoid spoilers. We don't know, yeah. guys. We're just we we don't know what we're doing. We just trust our spoiler chat in the Discord. So this is your fault. <laughs> this is your fault, spoiler chat. In fact, I think we can all blame Dakuna for this week's How reading. Da- no, no, and we're kidding. <laughs> we love you, Dakuna. Dakuna, we're, we're totally kidding. The heck out of you. Um, <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Uh, so, uh, all Singar. Uh huh. Uh, I, guys, I don't know. Happy 10K. Osengar is male. Arangar is male. Is female, and they are. They're like a weird duo. Know. So they're named after I, you know what, like. Do you know a what twin... I pictured in my head when I read them? What I was like, oh, they're like the Razak from. Um, the Razak. Yeah, from Aragon. From Aragon. Oh, I got gosh. Aragon on the brain lately. Guys, make sure you're following me on Twitter to campaign for me to be on the Aragon TV show. Um. Yeah, that is not what I thought of at all, but that is very cool. The The idea that they're named after this, like, dual-wielding style of fighting where the daggers are poisoned mm. and usually everybody involved dies. Yeah. Very fascinating. But also, like, they were living in a pretty in- enlightened age. And so I'm kind of like, why were people with, like, all this medicine and stuff playing this ridiculous... You know, it would be like if that existed in our time right now. And you're like, uh... That could have been from a lo- from a long time ago. Oh, they're not necessarily from the Age of Legends. They could be from any time, I think. Um, do you think that we've met these characters before, or are they completely new? Like, do you think it's revived um, Agenor and Belthamel? Or? That was, yeah, what I said to you, is I feel like those two Forsaken at the beginning who got to do absolutely nothing um, kind of got brought back. Because they think, weren't Balefires. Do you think that's why the the female one is like, this is a joke, right? Do you think it's because it was a man who's now in a woman's body? They're like, why do I have boobs? 
Uh, honestly, I think they got the lottery with that one. Boobs are fun. Boobs are great. Yeah. I, I, I like boobs a lot. Um, but, um, yeah, the, the, the uh, Shadar Haran, the voice of the, the mouth dark of one. The dark one. The, the tall Madral is like, yo, you work for me now. And they're like, okay, cool. And <laughs> prologue over. I mean, they ain't happy about it, but yes. Oh, my God. You guys, we fucking did it. We got through the prologue. Crushed it. Let's go. Now's a good time to remind you that this podcast is brought to you by Audible. Uh -huh. On Audible, you could have listened to the prologue, and it would have been only <laughs> three times longer than us talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Only many hours. Go to audibletrial.com to listen to the things that we talk about. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that is accurate. I, are you feeling I, the alcohol a little bit? Um, not, not really. I think you are. No, mm -hmm. I'm good. Mm -hmm. I also had like a bit of gamer stuffs, and now I'm like, I, I will definitely have to go pee in near the end of the show. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I'm calling it right now, guys. You've my never left the show to pee before. My prediction is this. Um, so we finally get to the book, The Lord of Chaos, Chapter One, The Lion on the Hill. Rand <clears throat> gets it's... sweaty with five men. What? Yeah, that, that is what happens. No, Rand is practicing the sword. <coughs> hmm. <laughs> Rand is practicing the sword. Uh-huh. And he's fighting a bunch of people. Giggity. And uh, he wins. No, he loses. He gets clocked on the head by the fifth one right at the end. And so that guy gets two gold uh -huh. coins. Um, and uh, people are kind of upset with him. They're like, dude, like, you have magic. You yeah. don't need to be the greatest swordsman alive. Well, but sure And also, is. like, don't die... In the, don't die trying to prove something in a practice field when yeah. there's real shit that needs to get done. Yeah, Bashir like throws a dagger at him or whatever. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I was like, Bashir is a badass. We like Bashir. His name's Davram. Like, what a name. What a, what a yeah. What a man, a what a man, what a man. We're not going to insert ads, YouTube. Calm down. YouTube is trying to, like, notify us to I throw know. in an ad. The worst. Um, And so... uh, Yes, I, I, I really like this line where someone uh, is uh, surprised that... Uh, he was not mad that the five of them worked together. And Rand replies, can I always count on my enemies not to work together? Yes. Based on who your enemies are, you kind of can. Your enemies, they're not good at working together. <laughs> well, it was a dig specifically at these, like, shitty nobles who are oh, yeah, around yeah. him, right? Yeah. Like, he knows what they're up to. He, I just, yeah. Thinking about did. the Forsaken and that line, I thought it was funny. Because I was hey, like, I don't know, they don't work that well. We know three of them are working together. That's true. And we also that we also know Semiel and, like, Grandal are, like, up to something, at least. Well, no, Grandal is manipulating Samael, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, His name and His name's Daddy Bashir. So they're they're chatting, uh, yeah. and uh, Rand tells um, Rand tells Bashir for the first time that the tower is split and reveals that that has happened, and everyone's got a little bit shocked about it. Uh, and then Tumat shows up and says, "Yo, Maz from Tame is here. He's here, ya boy." And that's mm -hmm. the end of chapter one. Yeah, that, that was easy. <laughs> it's quick. Very easy. Oh, very uh, quick. also, no, no, no. One thing I wanted to bring up is mm -hmm. that Rand is trying to be as good a swordsman as the dude from the Origins episode. Um, uh, It starts with a J. Ja, Jer Jer Jeremy? No, it's not. Jeremy Baramy? <laughs> Jeremy Irons. Jeremy He's Irons. trying to match the legendary. Joram, thank you, Berserker. Uh, yeah, so uh, that, that man managed to fight 10 men. Yeah. Uh, and so Rand. Jer Jerome. Rand is trying to do that. Uh, Philip Graysell says Oscar Isaac as Davram Bashir. Done. Cast him. Oh Give him the money. Oh my god, yes. I love but that. But he needs to have the beard from Dune. The... His beard in Dune is real. it's dope. It's a good beard. Alright, I love that. Um, so, Rand, uh, Rand runs into Tame, and he's like, yo, what's up, dude? And Tame's like, hey, I'm like 35, and I'm not crazy. And Rand's like, "That no, that's like, crazy. That's cool. The craziest part about this is that you're 35, and you're not insane. How, yeah. how the hell did you do that? <laughs> I've been doing this for two years, and I got a man from 3,000 years ago talking to me every five minutes. He won't shut up. Who, for some reason, Luce Theron has very strong feelings towards uh, Tame. Do you think Tame is also, like, reincarnated? No, I think, I think Luce Theron just doesn't like that he can channel. I think Luce Theron's jealous. Really? Okay. Yeah, Lucerne so. seems crazy. Like we, it seems like yes. Rand has crazy Lucerne in his head, and yes. not like end not. of life healed Lucerne, which is unfortunate. Yes. Oh, yes. He definitely has like a madman in his head, but I, I, I don't know. I like this idea of reincarnation. If it happens with our main characters, there's no reason it can't happen with the like less main characters. Yeah. And so I just wondered if Tame, like, not that he would know or realize it, but maybe Tame 
maybe like Luce Theron senses that Tame is like someone who was maybe an enemy or like a frenemy yeah. of Luce Theron's. Maybe. So, yeah. We'll, we'll find out uh, later, I'm uh, guessing. Luce Theron seems trustworthy. Yeah. Um, Tame, Tame shows up and is like, I thought we could like be like like work together but like you, you'll be like the bigger of two equals and Ren is like no you work for me and Tame's like yeah okay right. drops to his knees yeah he's like okay he knows the situation he's in and uh, you know what uh, props to him for trying mm-hmm. to like uh, punch up above his station but um, yeah Rand is like no yeah and so uh, Matt, Rand is like yo uh, do you know how to teach people how to channel and Tame's like yeah, I've done it a couple times I've, I've done it once or twice. Do you know how to test people for channeling? And uh, Tame's like, yeah, I've, I've done it a couple times. And Ryan's like, okay, cool. And he opens a gateway. And Tame's like, why do you need me? Yeah, literally. What the hell is that? Yeah. But that's the thing is I'm really excited to see what the gaps in, of knowledge for each of them are going to be and how mm-hmm. that overlaps, right? Because Rand is obviously going to know things that he doesn't. And Tame is going to know things that Rand doesn't because he's just been doing this for much longer. Yeah. Um, I also, I, I like that... Um, I, I like that Tame is almost as powerful as Rand. Almost, like at the yeah. end of the next chapter when he's like, show me how powerful you are. Yeah. He like opens up and Rand is like, you are. So like, you're strong. This is good. You are right? almost there. This is, it's very helpful. Like it's beneficial. It is one of those things that obviously is going to put Rand on edge because he can pose a potential threat, maybe. Mm-hmm. But um, Tame is like, how was I supposed to know I wasn't the dragon? And I think that that's a really good point, right? Yeah. Like I, I think that Tame is as powerful as he is. He, he stayed as sane as he did for a long time. Mm-hmm. Like, I, if, if you were in that position, why wouldn't you think that you're the Dragon Reborn? Right? I, yeah, I get it. He's like, I just had to fulfill one of the prophecies. Mm-hmm. Like, that is that is totally well, fair. And and I really liked the Tame's point of view of saying, like, victories, or uh, the history is written by the winners. If I had done any of the prophecies, then the history books would have said that I did them all. Yeah. And he's absolutely right. Like, yeah. l- look at how we teach history in America. Like, yeah. You don't know, obviously, because you've n- never learned down there. But, like, American yeah. history is littered with Americans being this, like, force for good constantly throughout all of history and always winning. And mm-hmm. that's not the case. Um, the United States of America just doesn't teach people that America has done bad shit and that they have lost. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And so history is literally how you teach it, yes. not how it actually happens. Yes. Uh, and that is sad. When he but... knows it. And we see it. We see that. We see the, the, the beginnings of it. Even with the the rumors flying around about Morghese and Rand and who's dead and who's alive and like everyone has their own version of events, right? Uh, Joey Fisher, <gasps> Joey, thank you for that super cheers. chat. Thank you for that super chat. Um, little behind, but y'all have mentioned the red setup Loghain. Swan is lying about that to stop a reconciliation of the tower. Okay, cool. I, I if that's a spoiler, thanks for super chatting a spoiler. Yeah, that's not. Something it seems like, like we don't know that yet, but. Um. Yeah. No. We, we. But thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that. Yeah. We. We don't. Uh, we don't know what Swan's version of events actually is. That's not a spoiler. She said so. What? It didn't seem like she said so. It's made pretty clear in book five. No, she's like, I'm going to help you get revenge. She didn't. When did she but say? She said she's sure. gonna help him get revenge, but it, that doesn't mean that it's a lie. Yeah, I don't remember. It's. I don't I, like. I think that that's definitely something that could be. True. I think that helping him spread that is what she's doing, but I, I I think that it's entirely possible that it's true. Yeah, or at least rooted in the truth. But also, like, t- like um, not tame. Loghain literally has like names of reds, like who came to him. Unless I guess he's just lying about no, it. No, but Sawan would have could have been given him those names. Sure. Okay, so maybe it's not a spoiler. Maybe that was revealed before. No, you're fine, Joey Fisher. I. Yeah, I thought that. I I don't think it's as explicit that it, that this specific thing is a lie. I think it's implied that she would help him get revenge. Of course. Yeah. It was implied that the House of Cards would fall apart if they caught her in a lie. That the rest of the lies could be revealed. All right, I'm wrong. Well, then, Joy Fisher, thank you for this uh, super chat and for bringing to my attention that I'm wrong. I'm going to have to go back and look at that because I, yeah. I don't know. It felt more vague what their exact plan was. It didn't feel like they revealed the plan to the audience. Yeah. But. Yeah, I wasn't like, uh, yeah, I I guess there's so much like happening that we missed that one. 
Uh, this is the type of thing that we usually remove on Reddit for being a spoiler because it relies on implication too heavily. I think it's implied that it could be a lie, but I think it's also possible that it's not, right? Yeah. All right. Well. Drink to the spoiler, not spoiler. <laughs> Cheers to Joey Fisher. Cheers. Thank you for that super chat. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, the tame thinking that he's a dragon reborn, I think was actually really interesting. And the fact that he's there, he's like, look, I, I will be at your side. I, I'm not going to try and like fight. Like he's, he's smart. Summer Hedge says we can't clarify it without being even more spoilery. Let's move on. Great. And now to the farm. <laughs> and now to the farm. Yeah. Um, so Rand is like, uh, we're going to the farm. Uh, um, no, uh, Tame, before they go to the farm, Tame is like, yo, I've got something for you. Oh, And he the gives seal. Rand a seal of the Dark One that Tame got from a farm yeah. in the middle of nowhere. He was like, this guy, he said he was so, <laughs> his, his ancestors were supposed <clears throat> to, like, guard it or whatever. And Rand almost breaks it. Yeah. I yeah. was like, oh, he's a... He lifts it above his head and is like, smash it, smash it, smash it. And everyone in the room is like... We are following an actual madman. Yeah, Bashir is like, maybe we should figure out what it does for Or Kadir says he got it on Antiques Roadshow. Oh my god. How much do you think they appraised it for? They appraised it for Jesus Christ. <clears throat> yeah. I've never actually seen an episode of Antiques Roadshow. M me neither. Uh, I, uh, yeah. This, this was the moment where I was like, oh, they fucked. Um, yeah. They're going to have to heal the taint. There's nine books, or there's, no, oh my god, we're only at eight books left. There's eight books left. They're going to have to heal the tank because he can't just keep going crazy. No, no, definitely not. And he tells uh, <clears> Tame <throat> eventually, he's like, I want to to heal this. And yeah. Tame, I think, might end up being the key to that because I think Tame and Loghain together are going to end up being the key to that, right? Because Loghain has been gentled. So he has that, like, severed connection to the One Power and therefore also to the taint. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm wondering if they will be able to figure out how no Randon says 20 bucks is max i can give for a seal in the dark one okay for a seal of the dark i don't think we're gonna take that i, I, I eric offered 500 we'll give the seal of the dark one to eric for 500 eric you, you congrats it's sold you have a seal don't break it uh apparently it's important um yeah there's only a few of those left actually so yeah honestly 500 is cheap if there's only seven of a thing ever made well and rand also doesn't know about the one that uh Nynaeve and elaine broke Oh, does he not? I don't think he knows about that one. So I think there's he, only... I think he has... I think he has the only ones left that aren't broken. He might just because of Egwene. No, they haven't talked to Egwene since then. Have they not? No, because they they don't talk to the wise ones anymore. And Egwene's hurt, right? Yeah, okay, okay. So I, 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 don't, I don't know that he knows about the seal that's broken in Saladar. Hmm. Yeah. Did one of the seals make it with the Sanchin over the water? Um, Did they leave with one of the seals? The Sanchin leave with one of the seals? They had pieces of qu qu Quill and Dark. No, they had the one that Ship Captain had. Yes, but no, <clears throat> that one guy had like a collection of that like material. Quendalar, yeah, but, Quindalar. but the Ship Captain had a seal. Yes. Both seals from Falma broke. Okay. Yes, so that broke. But okay. there is other like. Kindling, um, that Quindler. yes, that's the one. Um, that uh, there are other pieces that are not like pieces of the seal. I wonder if the so. Wait, seal... there's seven seals. There's seven, right? Yes. Both of them in Falmar are broken. Yeah. The one in Saladar's broken. So there's only four left, and Rand has three of them, right? Yeah, that's what Rand says. There's four left, so he knows about the. One oh, so he broken. must know. Yeah. He must know about the one in Saladar. Yeah, yeah he must. Yeah, because he says there's four left. Yeah. Damn. I assume that like Egwene, like they had communicated about that earlier, I guess. But... The one in the eye broke too. Oh my god, no, so there's only three left. I guess if that counts... So he can't know about the one in Saladar because he thinks there's four left, but there's only three left. And he has all three of them. Yeah, yeah. So he doesn't know about the one in Saladar yet. Oh. Because he says there's four, right? Okay. In this chapter. Okay. <clears throat> he doesn't break this one, thankfully. That would have been bad. Um, yeah, yeah, that would. Could you imagine if he just like smashed it in front of everybody? Uh, Methany, thank you for that super chat. Methany, thank you. Meanwhile, Aleda, uh, the watcher of the seals, is busily watching the wrong kind of seals in the Arctic. 
Also, imagine my delight upon joining for the end of the prologue, an hour in. Uh, Bethany, Cheers thank to that you. super chat. Cheers, we appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Elena, definitely not watching the seals. That's true. No, not doing a great job of that. No, no. Like, two out of ten. Uh, so, uh, Rand takes Tame to a, uh, this, this chapter is called A Woman's Eyes, which I found very interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, because he takes him to a farm. Yeah. Where there's a bunch of boys just sitting around kind of doing nothing. Yeah. Because Rand doesn't know how to test for the power in other men. Yes. But Tame does. And Tame's yes. like, you can travel through gateways, but you don't know how to do this. Yeah, he's like. And Rand's like, yeah, no, I don't. All right. <laughs> test them. I also love that Tame can pick up the traveling right away and Rand can pick up the testing right away. Like, they're both yeah. just, like, on it, you know? Well, and we learned that from, like, Nynaeve, right? Like, if you're powerful in the power, you can kind of see it and just kind of, like, do it. Yeah, 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 there's, like, an understanding. Which is interesting that none of the Aes Sedai can do what Elaine is doing. And that that seems to be, like, a different thing. Like, Elaine is weaving the one power in a way that is making these Terangrails, but people are watching her and not able to pick up on what she's doing. Yeah. It must be a very unique talent that she has. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so these, these guys traveled here because they want to maybe learn how to channel, and their poor wives mm -hmm. are like, I hate this. Why are we here? Yeah. So yeah, so Tame tests them all. Uh, Tame tests one, and he can channel. Yeah. And yeah. it takes like seven minutes, but he, he's got it. And Tame is like, oh, damn, you really are Tavir, and you really pulled the right, uh, right boys together on this farm. Yeah. And Rand can sense it before he does. Yeah, well, Rand is, you know, he's more powerful. Yeah, yeah, By yeah. a little. It's just interesting. Uh, and so Rand pulls Tame aside and he's like, all right, do the rest. I gotta go. I got shit to do. I gotta go. Um, it's and the theme song of this week's. <laughs> right. I think that Rand also, uh, the, the name of the chapter, A Woman's Eyes, Rand doesn't like that these wives of these men who are there are staring, staring at him. At and he's him. like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave. I'm uncomfy. Yeah. He also literally runs away from Avienda through the portal. Oh, yeah. She's like chasing him and he's like, Nope, not yeah, dealing with like, her Yeah, she's like, Randall and he's like, bye. Well, and we were talking, because we were reading at about the same speed this week. Yeah. We were kind of reading side by side in bed. And I was like, D are they mad at each other? And you're like, yeah, like, something must have happened. No, nothing happened. Rand is no. just worried that he's going to hurt her. Yeah. Which is, like, kind of I mature. Can... Well, and also... In because, a weird way. Because he knows Luz Theron killed Eliana. Yeah. Like, that's scary. Eliana! 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 We should do an episode of this where we turn on the cameras and just start saying Ileana for three hours and see how many people stay all the way to the stay end. Stay all the way to three hours? I don't think I would make it through, um, but uh, it's a nice idea. Um, Rand and Avienda, it's complicated. Um, yes. So Rand tells Tame to watch out for anyone who bail fire, or no, anyone who learns too quickly because mm -hmm. uh, they might be forsaken in disguise, mm -hmm. which I would love. That sounds very fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, I'm going to teach you no bail fire because bail fire be dangerous. Yes, yes. Yeah. If you know how to use it, don't. Yeah. <laughs> Ileana ASMR. Even though Rand throws it around like it's candy at... I candy mean, store. it's the only way we know how to destroy dark hounds and dark and and forsaken. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I kind of get it, but also it's gonna have some drastic consequences. Um, we, Matrick, we actually did do a reaction. We did, yeah. That is on the channel. If you go into the Wheel of Time uh, uh, playlist, playlist on the channel, it's a few months ago now, but it is there, and yeah. you can watch it, and uh, it's great. <laughs> yeah, you can go watch it. Yeah, it's in the playlist. Yes, very good time. Very good. Yeah, it was because we had to take a week off from the podcast because we were traveling, and so we recorded that, and that went up in the place of a, of a book club. Right. Uh, so Rand uh, pieces out, uh, mm -hmm. despite the fact that the ladies are snickering at him, and he does not understand the joke. I, okay, I, I'm all here for the IEL humor. I think they're hilarious. Sure. What? It doesn't, it's, 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 it's fine. It's so funny. Are you kidding me? It is me? never quite as funny as their reactions to it are. Sure. They're like laughing until you can't breathe. Maybe not. But like. Sometimes it's like, oh, your husband's not that tall. And the Ayala are like, oh, shit. Oh, she said you're not that tall. Oh. And they're like running around. Have you seen the video of the black guy seeing magic? And he just like runs away. No. That's the Aiel anytime says anything they think is funny. They like overreact so hard to everything. I love it. And like sometimes it's kind of funny, mm -hmm. but a lot of times they're like, oh, 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 his knife is sharper than your knife. <laughs> and Rand is like, okay, yeah, cool. I, I thought it was funny. <laughs> I don't know. Like, reading this, I was like, these guys, these Aiel, they'd be fun to hang out with. 
Uh, so they travel to Tyr, and um, one of the one of the Thunder Runners or Thunder Thunder something. Thunder Walkers. I thunder think? Walkers. Yeah. Uh, makes it. It tries to like challenge the girls to a joke off. A joke off. Yeah. And he loses the joke off. It's like a rap battle, but with jokes. But the boys, the other Thunder Walkers, acknowledge he lost. They 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 buckle They're their like, buckles. All right, all right. They buckle their buckles. They buckle their bucklers. And uh, then yeah. Rand is accused of not having a sense of humor. And he tells the worst joke in the history of jokes. So we're going to go through that joke right now live. Oh, you took a picture of it. I love this. All right. Where is it? Um, Guys, we have a joke for you. Did I? Please laugh. That? So <clears throat> Rand, stopping dead, Rand rounded on them so suddenly that several reached for their veils and looked about for what had startled him. He cleared his throat. <coughs> An irascible old farmer named Hugh discovered one morning that his best rooster had flown into a tall tree beside his farm pond and wouldn't come down. So he went to his neighbor, Will, and asked for help. The men had never gotten along, but Will finally agreed. So the two men went to the pond and began climbing the tree, Hugh first. They meant to frighten the rooster out, you see, but the bird only kept flying higher, <laughs> branch by branch. Then, just as Hugh and the rooster reached almost the very top of the tree, with Will right behind, there was a loud crack. The branch under Hugh's feet broke away, and down he went into the pond, splashing water and mud everywhere. Will scrambled down as fast as he could and reached out to Hugh from the bank, but Hugh just lay there on his back, sinking deeper into the mud until only his nose stuck out of the water. Another farmer had seen what happened, and he came running and pulled Hugh out of the pond. "'Why didn't you take Will's hand?' he asked Hugh. "'You could have drowned.' Why would you take, why should I take his hand now, Hugh grumped. I passed him just a moment ago in broad daylight, and he never spoke a word to me. <laughs> the f fuck is the joke? I don't, it's terrible. It's, it's, it's like, it's like a, a, a two out of ten joke. It's, it's I read so, it and I was like, it's so long. Yeah. It's so long. Mm -hmm. Like, you could cut... He fell past him without saying hi. No, no I get that. The water. I get the joke. Yes, I here's get the what the joke is. It's I get not that funny. he fell past him. But here's the problem. It is a full page. Yeah. The it's joke is a page long. Yeah. And there's barely a punchline. Unless the joke is that you're wasting someone's time. Oh, my God. It's, it's so funny. bad. Like, Rand. I felt so yeah. bad for Rand in this moment because the women are looking at him like he's like, not funny. It's the rooster. The rooster has to be the joke, And right? the truth is he's not funny. He's not funny at all. Like, he doesn't... You can only pull off this joke if you have, like, like Tom Segura level of, like, timing. And Rand does not. <laughs> he does not, unfortunately. Terrible. Um, terrible. Yeah. Rand, terrible. Not not a good joke. Like a D-tier joke, you know? Like, eh. It is a manner joke. Oh! It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a manner. Oh, I get that it's a manner joke. It's not a good joke. <laughs> Reese is like, Rand had the whole thing memorized. It, it's probably his favorite <laughs> it's joke his ever. Favorite joke ever. Yeah. It's like the joke that like he cracks up about. It's not funny. No. To, to, I, I do not think that there's a good stand up night at, in the two rivers. No, no. Stand up is pretty, pretty um, shallow in the stand up, in the, in the two rivers. Um, yeah. The water, the he water is, is funny, right? Cause water. Ha <laughs> ha. It's a Norm Macdonald style joke. Do not dare disparage Norm Macdonald. No, May no, no. he rest in peace. Okay. By calling that a Norm Macdonald joke. Norm Macdonald was one of the greatest comedians of the last 200 years of human life. Okay. Norm Macdonald is a god. Norm Macdonald is like, Norman Macdonald is the goat. He's one of the goats of comedy. Do not disparage him by saying that this bullshit joke, this not funny, craptastic joke that is barely about manners and is not funny is a Norm McDonald joke. I will fight you. I will fight you for the sake of Norm and his his contribution to humanity, okay? If you don't know who Norm McDonald is, go Google him. He's like one of the funniest person All right, Googling him. Ever. <laughs> He's like truly one of the funniest people ever. All right, all right, all right. I mean, he thinks nerdy just doesn't understand wetlander humor. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. If if this is wetlander humor, I'm fine not understanding it. <laughs> I don't want to be a part of it. Anyways, so um, um, Rand tells bad joke. So Rand finds out that uh, the Terrans and the Kyrian have not been allowing the chiefs of the Aiel into the tent when yeah. they're doing the big planning. So he, of course, brings them in, and he's like, uh, y'all want to do what the fuck I said? Or... Yeah. And what's did, did, I'm sorry, did we bring thousands of men here to um, 
to fuck around? And what's his face? is like, we should just charge in there right now and just smack him. And Rand is like, you're an idiot. Rand is like, you know Samael shoots lightning out of his fingers, right? Yeah, I'm like, because you have a couple of horses, that doesn't mean shit. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. also... Like, well, but our cavalry... I'm yeah, like, yeah. The, no. No, yeah. Weiramon, that's his name. Oh, what a, yeah, what a, what a name. Yeah, no, I, I hate him. He's an idiot. And Rand knows he's an idiot. But the fact that they have this, like, weird kind of plan ploy that only Bashir and Matt and Rand know. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Very exciting. I cannot wait to see how that backfires. Like, I'm, I'm super stoked. That's right, Mike McCarty. Turd Ferguson. <laughs> it's a funny name. So, have you never seen the uh, celebrity Jeopardy sketches on SNL? Oh my god, Norm Macdonald does Burt um Burt Reynolds. Um it's so it's it, it is genuinely one of the funniest things ever. Will Ferrell as um um oh who hosts Jeopardy? Um I never really watched Jeopardy. I can't remember his name. That's so sad. I know uh, he's Tom very Hanks famous. does Tom Hanks. Yeah. Uh Alex, Alex Trebek. Trebek. Thank that's you. It. Jesus, I can't believe I blanked on that. Uh yeah. also, may he rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Uh good Canadian boy Alex Trebek. Yeah. Need to buy Clarusa Culture DLC. <laughs> um, the Sean Connery bit is is probably the best bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Shuck it, Trebek. Anyway, uh, you can tell where my humor was raised when I was a child. Uh... Mm -hmm. Swords for 200. <laughs> oh. I'll take eight titty for 400. That's appetite. Um. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. Um, so uh they they basically he's basically like, hey y'all, just chill until Matt gets here. He will mm -hmm. tell you what to do, I promise. Yeah. Matt will tell you what to do. And all of them are like Fine, I guess we'll wait. We don't want to deal with the Aiel though, even though we hate the Kyrie the Kyrians and the Terrans hate each other, but they, they hate, hate the Aiel more. Yeah, yeah. I'm like and Rand is like, you know what, I give up trying to make you guys work together, y'all suck. Like uh, Wheel of Time Jeopardy? Oh God, we'd be. I'm not gonna. We would have to read all the books first. Yes. Spoilers. Yes. Unless someone wants to make a Jeopardy that's only up until the. Book no, no, we'll read. do it. We'll do it after. I'll, I'll host Wheel of Time Jeopardy. We'll get you on. We'll get the innkeeper on, and we'll get um, Daniel Green. Daniel Green, formal invitation. Uh, and we'll I'll, I'll, we'll do Wheel of Time Jeopardy with anyone who reads Wheel of Time. Incredible! I love it. Everyone start um, tweeting at Daniel Green. Uh, Daniel Green hashtag. Daniel Green for Wheel of Time Jeopardy. The thing is, um, is that um, one of the category has to be Robert Jordan's kinks. <laughs> and it's all going to be scenes about spanking, about folding your uh, arms under your breasts. That's so funny. And mostly just that. Yeah. That'll be the, that'll that be the category. That is so funny. Mm -hmm. I'll take uh, Robert Jordan's kinks for 500. <laughs> Daniel Green hosts Wheel of Time Jeopardy. Oh, cool. Oh, shit. Well, I didn't know that. Oopsie. Well, then... Fuck us, I guess. Um, Never mind. We don't want to. We don't want to take. Yeah. The one. The one thing we kind of learned from this chapter is that a bunch of people have uh, turned their backs on uh, Rand. They fled into the jungle. <laughs> the, the... Welcome to the jungle. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Rand has had their titles and lands stripped from them, which has the Terrans and Kyrian being like, they're like, oh damn. Ah, they're this like, is bad. Well, yeah. They're like, at least when we die, we die as nobles, but now they die as peasants. And yeah. What's worse than that? That, it, it's like the best move he can do because he's like, oh, I'm never going to turn away from that. Yep. Quark's Bar, thank you for that super chat. <laughs> thank you for the super Congrats chat. Congrats on 10K. 10K, thank you. let's go. This is a chaotic he's stream. He's a good to review. Have our, have our book clubs been getting more chaotic lately? Um, yeah, we're reading The Lord of Chaos. Good point. Uh, Norm McDowell grew up in a small town five minutes away from my small town. He's a good Two Rivers boy. I'd love to hear it. That's amazing. I do lo I love, I love I love it. I love it. Um... And yeah. Nerdy thought the Lord of Chaos was the dark one. I did, and Clarice was right, and I was wrong, and I accept that my wife is smarter than I am, okay? It hurts me, but I accept it. So sorry. Uh, so Rand, Rand tells him to stay put till Matt gets there, and then he leaves the tent, and uh, the girls, uh, mostly Nayla and Samara, think this is a good time to teach Rand how to get Avienda back. Yes, dating advice from the Maidens of the Spear who uh, can't ever get married because they're already married. Um... They're like, you know what, you should ask to wash her hair. And the other one's like, no, 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 that's way too forward. Just brush her hair. I was like, what is this, like, weird, like, grooming, like, ritualistic stuff? Like. Yeah. It's the same advice that, um, isn't it the same advice that Turk gives Tarzan? Yeah, pick the fleas out of her hair. Yeah. 
Turk is Aiel confirmed. Oh my god. No, no, we're not. Aiel. There is no Tarzan Wheel of Time crossover. There's no way. I mean, it's the same advice. Sure. Mm -hmm. Winner back with a good de lousing. Hey, uh, do you wanna do you wanna uh, brush my hair? No, because you complain every time I do it. When do you brush my hair? I've done it like three times, and every time you're like, "Ow, ow, no, that hurts." You I'm not good at it. Brushed my hair. I brushed your hair. I definitely have, and it I caused you pain because your hair is very thin and your scalp is weak. My scalp is weak and my hair is tangly. That's yeah. true. And so it's it's not a good experience for you. No. If it was a great experience, I would do it more. But you you have to it has to be very specifically done. Here's the thing. And I, it's not great when I'm doing I it. I think if I brush my own hair first and then you just run a brush through it, it would actually be really nice. I, I'm down. Great. I, I will do literally anything Guys, you ask of me. Nerdy's gonna brush my hair later. Great. And then maybe he'll wash it. No. No no no. That's <laughs> Guys, that is a whole process. It takes it's, me like twenty five so minutes to wash my hair. And there's no comfortable way for me to sit in the shower and do it. You know what I mean? Like yeah, no, no that's not there's happening. There's no way. <laughs> So, uh, Lord of Chaos, Chapter 5. ASMR hair brushing? A different dance. So, we finally cut over to Matram Coffin. Uh-huh. And Matram Coffin is hanging out in a town. Uh, and he's got his boys with him. He's hanging out with the boys. Uh, and he's making eyes with this girl, Betsy. He's like, Betsy, you want to dance? And she she's cute. like... Sorry, everybody. Listen, everybody. I want to thank you. Turtle, thank you for becoming a narc. Thank you, D Turtle. Welcome to the nerd table. Cheers, friend. I don't think your Jedi Fallen Order video is going up today. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm too drunk to edit it. That is. That's fair. Um, Yeah. Yeah, so um, Betsy starts um, uh, reciting um, Not Getting Married Today by Company. Yeah, she and, just speaks um, a million miles a minute. And Matt is like, it's great. I just asked if you wanted to dance, girl. <laughs> like, I also love that the boys are like, so we're trying to figure out a way where we can win our money back from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And horse Matt's like, racing? not going to happen. No, no, they're like horse racing. And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Horse racing. He's like, I can, uh, I can uh, eye a good horse. What does he say? He says something really weird. Oh, I didn't write it oh, down. Oh, oh, he, he talked, there's a line about trading horse flesh, and I hated it, and I didn't write down the whole line, and I should have, but I was like, why do you have to say it like that? Matt trades horse flesh. Yeah, no, I, yeah, no, I, I, I hated it. I was like, wait, there are, you could say this any other way. Um, yeah. So Matt, uh, Matt and the boys, uh, they go and they do his, like, random inspections, because the voices in his head tell him to do random inspections, and he's like, "Oh, but he had grown up watching his father trade horse flesh. I don't like it. I don't like it. Anyways, sorry, we're moving on. <laughs> we're moving on. You good? Yes, I don't like it. I uh, this just in, Claris Polaris does not like the term horse flesh. Yeah. Yeah, surprise. No, no it's it's not a good word. <laughs> um." So uh, Matt Matt does his like random inspection of the boys. Yes. Uh, and we find out that he um, forces different groups of people within his company to be the red arms, and they have to police for a day. And yeah. if anything breaks while they're the red arms, they, they have to have pay, to pay, for, pay it. for it. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Br brilliant. There there are definitely like flaws in that thinking as well, but but for the most part, great. Yeah, because you you don't want to be the guy that like has to pay when someone else broke something really expensive, and then the next day that guy's the red arm and he just beats the crap out of you for it. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, I don't think, I, I think that that would, like, draw attention, you know what I mean? But, you, you know, like, but, like that guy, the guy that just broke something expensive, he's now, you're, he's now the red arm, and yeah. you're like, well, you broke this for me, so I'm gonna break this for you, and you wanna cost him the money that it costs you. Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a weird, like, dangerous spiral, but for the most part, as long as, like, everyone's on the same page, um... Brilliant idea. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love that Matt has all these brilliant ideas that aren't his, but are his. Uh, and then Matt complains about how bad the the song, the recruiting song that they're singing is, which I think is very fun. Yes. But he comes upon uh, some of his uh, uh, some of his men in a circle around something. He's like, what, what's going on There's here? There's a commotion. And some hunters of the horn are beating up a child. Yeah, because they... They molested his horse. By and by molesting sitting on it, it. He, he sat on the horse. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, molestation in what we're talking about today, but uh, this is not one of them. 
Uh-huh. Uh, and so uh, Matt just uh, beats everybody up real quick yeah. with his spear. Matt uh, literally like cans the one guy, mm-hmm. just absolutely annihilates his baby maker, and then the other one I think he wraps over the head. Um, and yeah. Oliver's like, please, sir, may I have some more? <laughs> I was like, it's literally oh. Oliver, the poor orphan. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. of course it's Oliver, the poor orphan. God damn, Robert Jordan. Guys, Robert Jordan has read a book. Ha- has read a book. Do you yes. think Robert Jordan is a fan of musicals? Do you think Robert Jordan had seen the musical Oliver? I hope so. I hope so. I Guys, I think Oliver, uh, Robert Jordan might have been a fan of musicals. Mm-hmm. We need to find out. I need yeah. to know. Can someone please tell me if Robert Jordan was ever a, a musical theater fan? Can this be confirmed? Um, yeah, but apparently he's a really ugly child. Like, I, I guess that was important. Do you think Oliver is going to be, like, wildly important to the rest of the series? He's going to grow up and he's going to be the next Galad. Oh. He's going to be super hot, super capable. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There's no I in Oliver. No, we know that there's no I in Oliver. It's Oliver, but it's he's basically the it's, same he's, thing. He's based on Oliver. He's actually 17. He's severely malnourished. <laughs> That's so funny. Marissa. Well, Matt is like he looks like he's six, and he's like I'm nine, and Matt's like I guess if you say so. Like, uh, but uh, Matt takes him in and gives him to Nelsian, and Nelsian's like I don't, I, <gasps> I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to be dad. What? I don't, don't give me a child. And Matt's like, take care of him. Yeah, get out of like, here. What do I do with a kid? Yeah. The hell do I do with a child? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Oh my God, poor. I like that. I like that. Oliver is actually probably Lanfear. That makes sense to me, Nim. That what? Oliver is probably Lanfear. Yeah. Probably Lanfear. Yeah, totally. So, uh, Matt, they they go back to the inn. Uh, Matt's like, all right, Betsy, dance 2.0. And they go at it. They're just like dancing they for hours. They go at it. And the girls don't tire. These girls have stamina. Mm-hmm. They are they are danced around that room like crazy. Mm-hmm. And then Matt is like, they're not tired because men do all the work in dancing. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. Uh, Ginger Rogers taught us otherwise. Yeah, yeah, G- yeah. Mm-hmm. And so just when the boys are like, all right, pff, bedtime, we're mm-hmm. tired. Matt's like, no, 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 no. Y'all are going to, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Y'all are going to work all night, get everyone ready to go. We leave in like three hours. Yeah, yeah. We leave in three hours. I'm going to sleep for two, so wake me up soon. Before, Before you, you go, go, go. Don't leave me hanging on a line like yo-yo. I do, wake me up. I agree with Takuna. I think that the like flashback that he has is, is really like beautifully written. The like transition between him dancing and him being in like a different place with different people. Oh, and yeah. And that yeah. like beautiful, like, yeah, yeah. I also, I, yeah. I love that he's teaching the... He's teaching these musicians everywhere he goes songs from his past, mm-hmm. or his pasts, I guess, mm-hmm. um, and they can't really play it right, but he doesn't care. He just, yeah, like, yeah. is, like, toe-tapping along. He's he like, tips nah, them anyway. He got the rhythm right. Yeah. He ha- he's, he's been, he's been... Frank, guys, thank you for that super chat. Oh, Frank, thank Cheers you. Cheers to you, my friend. Cheers. Um, yeah, he tips them even though they play really badly, um, but you know what? I appreciate that. Um, and so the boys get ready to, to get ready to ride. Yeah. Um, and he wants them to go like 34 miles in a day, which is crazy Mm -hmm. because I can go that in like 20 minutes in my car. So Mm -hmm. like suck on those nuts, Matt. (laughs) Wow. Good one. Good one. (laughs) Got him. Sick burn. (laughs) What? (laughs) Nothing. Just... (laughs) <laughs> I'm giggly today. I'm having fun. Mm, you're giggly? I've had some champagne. Some giggle juice? Some champagne. Why? Why would you call it that? Um, what, champagne? Yeah. All right. Chapter six, threads oh. woven. Oh, do you have any predictions that now that we're um, this far in for um, giving up half the light to save the world? What? So, Matt, when he, w- when he did the thing and died and all the prophecies and shit yeah it said he it was said give up half the light to save the world mm-hmm. any new insights on that he's going to lose an eye <laughs> okay eye patch hat and spear i could see it i wonder yeah, giving up half the light he's gonna give up half of his ability to see i wondered if matt is going to be the downfall of the Aes Sedai. Probably. Yeah. And he would love it. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Like, half the light, like, 
Or maybe like half the band of the red hand. Band of the red hand. I don't know. I don't think will, the band will, of the red hand is the light. But it might be his light. By the time we get to that point, mm-hmm. they might be like his joy. And I think that maybe he might have to ride them into a battle where he knows that they're going to die. Maybe. Okay. You know? Yeah, maybe. Um, uh, Kevin, Kevin thank, thank you for you six months. For six months. I'm glad today is your favorite. Today is a very special day. Happy 10K. Let's go. He's going to lose his hat. He likes that hat a lot. <laughs> no, so there's going to be nine moons, and he's going to gonna get rid of three and a half, or four, four and a half of them. Because I can do math. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, his wife is going to die. You think? Yeah, because the moon is half the light. It's the light at night. He's going to have to kill his wife. Oh, shit. In order to save the world. He does tend to like dark friends. Like, do you think Betsy is a dark friend? She might be. Nah, Betsy's innocent. Betsy's too cute. But, like, the, the moonlight is half the light. Not half the light literally, but no, half but the light in terms of time. In terms of the time of the day. So ah. he, might have to, he might have to kill his wife. That's... Mm-hmm. This is a theory of nerdies that he said way back, and I like it. Oh, you did. You did. Okay. I, guys, we've said many things on here, and so I apologize if I cannot remember them all, but I, I do like that one. So. Yeah, it's good. It's chapter good. six. Thank you, dude. Guys, we're catching up. We're catching up. Yeah, we're getting there. We, we're two hours in, and we're uh, almost halfway through the reading. Great. Uh, yeah. Samail. <laughs> Chillin'. Uh, he goes to um, Grandel's house, mm-hmm. and grandel has got, like, just the weirdest acrobatic orgy you've ever seen going on um uh yeah i don't know if anyone's actually like fornicating but they're all like naked in there (laughs) yeah i don't know but what we do know is that we find out that uh grendal has set herself up in aradoman sorry this is literally the scene from the witcher where yennefer is in the middle of an orgy yes yeah 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 it's similar. Yes. Um, and uh, we find out that, uh, you know, all of those Damani sluts <laughs> that we've been told about, they, they, they do be slutting it Damani up. Damani hussies, how dare. How dare they. And is anyone surprised that Grandel's in Eridomon? It, no. It, it makes so much sense. Not surprised in the slightest. And I love that Samuel's like, you know, you're like kind of in a hot spot here. Like, he, she's like, I don't care. I can leave whenever I want. She's like, yeah, I, I can. The, all the people here are hot. Yeah. They don't wear many clothes. Yeah, it's great. They're, uh, the king's brother and the king's wife are apparently incredible acrobats. And beautiful. Yeah, they're all super hot. This is where I want to be. It was kind of weird, though, that it was a bunch of family members. Like the king's wife, his brother, Ooh. and then his like, younger... Yeah, anyways. I want to I talk about M. Bryce's point here. I mm-hmm. feel like if you just have orgy going on 24-7 that you've compelled to happen, you just get bored. Yeah. Yeah. I like... Here's the thing I like about sex is that... I, like, lead up to it. I earn, not earn it, but, like... But sure, yeah. But there's, like, an element of, like, I I flirt, I turn them on, they become interested. Yes. They get involved, they flirt back, they turn me on. And, and so by the time you, by the time you get to the sex, you feel like you've, like, put in a little bit of, like, effort into making the other person feel comfortable, making them feel aroused. And yeah. so when you finally do have sex, it's a release of the, like, buildup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas for Grendel, like, I don't really know what you it's get about... out of just physical pleasure. No, I, it, it is about the control of it. Like, I don't actually think it's about the actual, like, pleasure and the oh, sex sure, sure, sure. Yeah, of yeah. it, right? It is everything around that and surrounding it, which is why it's more interesting. Sure, yeah. I just think that I would get, like, there, eventually I feel like this would be boring all the time i mean like just compelling everyone around you all the time i just i feel like like grandel must love having some male come over because she can actually talk to him mm-hmm. right yeah like, can you imagine because uh, being like uh, yeah being worshipped by everyone all the time i, I, I yeah well I it's like being that. surrounded by televisions like yeah it's cool it's cool that there's yeah. there's things going on. There, mm-hmm. There's stimulus happening in the room around you, mm-hmm. but it's not interactive. You can, you're not really a part of it. You're just forcing it to happen. Yeah. And so I, I feel like um, why I don't think it's about. I get really bored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I get yeah. really bored. Yeah. This is a like weird power dynamic thing for Grindel, and it's uh, very icky. Very very icky. <laughs> Be- yeah. I I just I like having people around me that I can talk to. I like y'all. 
right? She's... There's a reason why we love having people in, in our chat is because we want to interact with people. We want to have fun. We want to like read your, con you know, she just, she yeah. has nothing yes, coming yes, yes. back to her. She's sending a lot out and she's in control. And I'm sure that feels great most of the time. Mm -hmm. But God, like when she, I feel like she just wants a friend. Yeah. And that's why she's like, Samail, come hang out. <laughs> I don't have I any news. I want to manipulate you well, without not... having to compel you. Oh, for sure, for sure. But also, I think that she, like, she's she doesn't manipulate him right away because she just wants to, like, she wants someone to, like, hang out with her. <laughs> Nobody wants to have a consensual one-time orgy with chat confirmed. Wouldn't be my first, won't be my last. You know what I mean? Uh, I do like a consensual orgy. Consensual orgy is great. It would be tough, though. I We would have to rent, like, a whole convention hall for all oh! 600 of us. An orgy convention. No. Yeah, and if we're going to watch, if we're going to invite, Can... if we're going to invite the people who don't watch live, too, like, no, here's that's the thing. thousands of people, guys. I think Robert Jordan's estate would come after us. NerdyCon. <laughs> no. NerdyCon is just a big orgy. No, no, no. Those do exist. Oh, um, I'm sure. There, there, are, there are like uh, you can go to like um, cruise ships that are just like orgy, orgy, right? Weeks. With yeah, like yeah. hundreds of people on it. Yeah. <laughs> Metheny, that's why my keep cat keeps messaging you guys. It gets lonely at the top. Thank you for that super chat. Oh my god, that's so funny. Uh, cheers. <clears throat> um, Sam, Sammy. Cheers. Okay, I, Sammy the cat. Yeah. Sammy the cat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Grain doll con. Smut corners every corner. Oh my god, dragon snacks. Dragon 10 snacks. memberships. Oh my god. What's you up to, Dragon Snacks? Thank you so much. Yes, Albino. Light friend, we... SG, Frank S, Stephanie Mason, Ishan Fino Fikas, Anson Eckel, eh, Russian name, and Jeffrey Adams. <laughs> Enjoy those. Uh, 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 Asen as well. Um, <laughs> and really, really... Neha. Yeah, those are characters Asen that I as well, yeah, do yeah. not know how to pronounce. I'm so sorry. How um... to spread monkeypox 101. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, guys. Um, be really careful if we're going to orgies right now, especially if you're like me yes. and you are a man who has sex with other men. Uh, be very careful. Uh, be, very careful. be vigilant. Uh, monkeypox is dangerous. If you can get the smallpox vaccine that they are uh, starting to ship out, especially in the States, do get it if you're in a community that's more at risk. Uh, it, it is dangerous, and uh, mm -hmm. we are joking around. We're having fun, but I do. But also, I, that is a very funny safe. joke. But please, please stay safe. Please stay safe. Uh, it is a very painful uh, disease that is affecting a lot of people, and yeah, um, yeah, yeah. our hearts really go out to all those people. Yeah, we want to. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it was yeah. a, it was a good joke. I appreciate joke. it. Albino, yes, we did meet on a cruise ship. Don't ask questions. <laughs> I mean. All I'm saying is, this, I'm not uh, going back on a cruise ship, y'all. If we're doing the orgy con, we're doing it on land. Yes, on land. Cruise please. ships are a nightmare. Yeah, mm -hmm. unless it's like a one day cruise ship. But. A one day cruise ship. It just like go. It's it's starts in New York and we just go into the harbor and then come back. We go into international waters so we can do some shit and then we come back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, where were we? We're uh, chilling with Grandel and Samail. Are you surprised that this section got us talking about some weird shit? I was going to say, why do we always end up talking about orgies? But this one is actually, this makes sense because... We're talking about orgies at an orgy, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. Deadsy, a three-hour cruise isn't long enough for me. I need more time than that. <laughs> you want to go more than once, right? So you want you want to go once or twice, recharge a little bit, go again, right? Yeah. It's, it's all about balance. Just a complex of igloos, the igloo orgy. The great igloo orgy of 2022. <laughs> so Samael thinks that he's got he's got the upper hand on Grendel here. Mm -hmm. But what we find out after he leaves is that she's like the world's greatest psychologist. Oh, yeah. yeah. She, he is fully playing into exactly what she wants him to do. Um, well, and exactly what Demandred, Masana, and Samarhade. Like, she she's doing the manipulating on behalf of the entire Forsaken team. Yep. Who are like, fuck Samael. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dragon Sex, thank you for being a member for two months. <laughs> Members only orgy. Cheers that's to That's more manageable. Cheers to yeah, that. Yeah, that's that you don't need a huge convention hall for. Well, not if people keep gifting out memberships. Unless you want to pay $5 to be a part of the orgy. <laughs> They're usually more expensive than that. Usually, usually have to chip are. in for the hotel room. Ah, uh, fair. Yeah. And you know what? We want to make sure that the cleaning services get tipped really well. So I might cost a little bit more than that. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm revealing too much about my life. Anyways, um, yeah, uh, Samael, kind of dumb, and Grandal, very fascinating. Yeah. Very, 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 very fascinating. Yeah, is there anything else in that chapter that you wanted to talk about? I didn't write down anything. There's any, so like... much more in the chapter. Um, we're, we're still in the first point of view. Sure, I just mean, like, um, there wasn't... Grandal yeah. has been pulling in Shibate and Shibato from the land beyond the waste. Oh yeah, there's a new land that we've discovered. Well, no, it's the one that the Silk Road goes to. The Silk 
Oh. It's the, it's where the peddlers have been going across the waste. Oh. Got um, but right, we find right. out that they have a really fascinating structure for their leaders, which is that every seven years they just die. Well, no, but so the so the the woman is queen. Uh huh. For seven years. Because she was sure because her husband was king. He just died, right? So then seven years. So then she marries someone. And she is queen for seven that years. That man becomes the. That man becomes the like king in waiting yes. husband. They're married for seven years. Then she, she dies, dies mysteriously. Yes. And then the pattern. He gets married, and then a woman is, is the, the in queen waiting in waiting. And they've been doing years. this for a thousand crazy. years. Crazy. I love it. It's crazy. I love it. Angela, Angela VM, thank you about super chat. Super duper chat. Seeing Matt like song and dance, what would be your favorite musical that could be cast with Wheel of Time characters? Into the Woods. That's very complicated. There's enough characters, though, in Into That's the Woods. That's what I'm thinking. That's yeah, the yeah. problem. Here's the thing. There are too many characters in this Godforsaken series. No, 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 no. Oh, my God, I have it. Company. Rand is Bobby. Um, Min of Avienda and... Uh, oh, my God, this is brilliant. So, Rand Rand is Bobby, right? Mm -hmm. So, then you have Min, Avienda, and... Um, Elaine. Elaine uh -huh. are the three women yeah. that he dates. Yes. Uh, Moiraine and Lan are um, the Patty Lapone role. Ah! Yeah, does yeah, anybody yeah. wear a hat? Yeah. Uh, and then Perrin is the one that he does. No, Matt is the one he does kung fu with. Uh -huh. And then Perrin and Fi and uh, whoever Nine Moons is. Uh -huh. And then um, Fayil or uh, sorry, Matt is the Matty does kung fu with. Perrin is the one who's like having the rocky marriage. Because it's Fayil. No, it makes sense. no, even better. Matt is uh, Matt is at the wedding that is like the the wedding that goes wrong. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Don't tell Paul, but I'm not getting married today. And Varen is the okay. is the singer. Is the Where yeah, is yeah, this that's Varen. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's the the, the yeah. Mm -hmm. And not just because Company is my favorite musical, but because it works. It, you know what? It actually kind of does work. Um, if you don't know musicals, I'm sorry, that was not. Yeah, it, it's, it's the only musical where the lead has three women in his life. So, mm -hmm. so it just kind of makes sense. Um. Uh, yeah, there's a new land that we are finally yeah, getting more information and about, which is very cool. Yeah. I actually thought that was fascinating. Um, definitely going to come into play in like three books from now. But also the reveal that the um, the one power wielders there kill off the ruler every seven years is so funny to me. That they're like, yeah, yeah, you guys are in power, but like every seven years we murder you and force you to marry someone else. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Fucked. So then uh, Grandal, Grandal's still there and she's like, oh, mm -hmm. this idiot. But uh, he's gonna attack. I'm surrounded. He's by gonna idiots. attack Rand for us. Mm -hmm. He's gonna be a good boy. He's gonna attack Rand. And he's gonna do what we need him to do. Mm -hmm. Even though uh, the Dark One told them to let the Lord of Chaos roll. Don't really understand it, but I'm sure it will reveal itself to us soon. Yeah. Oh, Rand is gonna mess up big, and that's all part of the plan. Yeah. Yeah. I love that Samuel fully just like murdered somebody on his way out. Oh, yeah, he cuts it up. That's crazy, too. He, the brand has to, like, leave areas where he can open portals because the portal will just rip someone apart. Well, that's what I mean. Like, if he portaled to the farm and he accidentally just, like, cut somebody in half, that would be awful. Yeah, no, he definitely... There's a field where they're like, don't go there because Rand could rip you in half at any moment. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So then we cut over to Semerhage, uh, who is officially the scariest person in this entire franchise to me. Um, Semerhage has a, uh, Aes Sedai, uh, mm -hmm. who we later learn is Cabriana Mecandes, which is maybe the sexiest name so far in this entire franchise. All right, I can, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cabriana Mecandes. I appreciate that. Like, that's hot. That's, that is the, <laughs> that's, hot. that's the star yeah. of a fucking telenovela right there. Oh, it's like, of a... You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> yeah. Semerhage is, uh, terrifying. She's oh. at Shiogul, literally in hell... And worried. has been asked to torture. Yeah, and she's, like, worried that she's not enjoying it enough anymore until she causes the right amount of pain. And then she's like, yeah, no, this is fun. Like, no, I'm good. I'm like, oh, my God. And she's like, oh, I hate how crude I have to be about this and how mm -hmm. I have to rush it because I would have so much fun with this at a different time. And I was like, ah, uh, ah. <laughs> uh, so she she starts by torturing the, the Aes Sedai. And then she starts to go torture yeah. the warder by just giving him so much pleasure. Uh, and then she gets distracted and starts thinking about other people. Uh, and, and when she comes back, dies. he dies of pleasure. Yes. Which, like, please. If you're gonna go... Summer Hage, I'm me next. Me next. Yeah, I was gonna say, if you're gonna go, f fine. That's probably gotta be, I guess, the best way to do it. But, like, it was horrendous. It rage. is one way to get dehydrated. 
Wow. Wow. Uh, we also learned that um, Simrhaj is like, is like, is, is, is interested in power. But if she's like, if the Dark One says that he's going to be the Niblis, then fine. Oh yeah, we I learned that, that term. I, we haven't heard that term before this week, right? The Niblis, yeah. The like. The, the nipples. S the nipples. The one that right under, so the Dark One is the head and then the Niblis is the nipples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then everybody else. Um, so uh, the, it's the Dark One wants Rain to be the nipples of the Dark One. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she scares me. She was also apparently like the greatest doctor of all time. And then they tried to... I, I want to know the truth about what happened. Because she's like, they were just jealous of me. And I'm like... Mm, no, no, you, you did were, something. You were healing people but hurting them while you did it? Yeah. She's like, whatever, I saved their lives. So they should so be So what if I tortured them to save their lives? Yeah. Yeah. No, I... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Horrifying. Truly. Utterly Horrifying. Summer Hodge does not have to pay the $5 for the orgy. Better to be the nipples than the taint. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I would rather be the nipples than the taint. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she doesn't get the information that she needs right away. So she's got to go back and torture some more. End of chapter. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it, that was wild to read. That was a wild freaking ride. Marco um, says uh, the Forsaken don't actually care about Rand. They just want to be the Nibliss, apart from the ones that have personal grudges against Lutz their entire time. Yeah, yes. but reading the first half, I was like, well, no, Samael definitely has a grudge against Oh, for sure. Rand. But it's just interesting that Simrahaj, like, because we get her POV, so it's not like we're being tricked into it. She's legitimately like, eh, yeah, sure, Rand's going to be that. Then uh, then I'll, I'll bow, I'll serve him. Whatever. I'm like, S okay. Chapter seven. A matter of thought. Uh, <laughs> what? I don't know why, but the chapter seven, my first note was, Forsaken are fucked. <laughs> I don't remember why I wrote that. Why did you write that? I don't know. Forsaken fucked. Did you I also did not chapter? spell fucked right. No, I didn't. I write, I, these are for my notes. Full only. ched. No, this, no. I know what it says. That's all that matters. <laughs> but there's no C in it. I know. I was writing fast. <laughs> That's why, like, Mogadian is my... Mo. Like, and, like, sure. Simrahaj is sometimes just S. Because I'm like, I ain't nobody got time for that. So, um, um Elaine and Nynaeve, they're, uh, they're going into Saladar. Or, mm -hmm. sorry, into Teleran Riyadh. They're in Saladar. And uh, they t put on these new Terangrials mm -hmm. that the... Uh, that Elaine has made, which mm -hmm. is so cool. And there's enough for kind of everyone to have them. Yeah. And so they drink a little tea and they go into Teleran Riyadh and they meet the Aes Sedai in town. And the Aes Sedai immediately behave like they are like just Sedai. the uh, the Aes Sedai. I, I really hate them. They're going to fall. There is going to be no <laughs> Aes Sedai White Tower by the end of the series. I cannot stand Sharia anymore. And I yeah. liked her when we were at the White Tower. Yeah. But the like... This chapter makes them seem so incompetent, mm -hmm. like wildly incompetent. Yep. It's frustrating. Yeah. And then they nearly all die. Yeah. And Elaine saves their asses and they're like, thanks, but yeah. you're still in accepted. Like they're like, they're, oh man, I'm just, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just, I, I like, cause they're the rebels and they're the right in the right a little bit here. So yes. like, I want to like them, but, but I just can't. Also just a pain in the ass. Um, yeah, yeah. This was this was such a fascinating chapter. We did learn some interesting tidbits of, of information. Oh yeah. At least about what Elena knows and and that kind of thing. Um, and how Elaine was like, I already told you guys some of this information, and they're finally reading it for themselves, and so they're actually gonna accept it because they didn't listen to me. Yeah. Um. <sighs> yeah, yeah. The ice and I kind of suck. They're definitely not gonna be around by the end of the book. Yeah, I love that they're in, so they're in a late, so they, they, they take the Aes Sedai, they teach them how to, like, teleport in, um, uh, Tarvalon, or T Teleran Riyadh, and they go to Tel Tarvalon, and they're in Aleda's study, and Aleda appears, like, screaming at them that she's gonna reunite the One Tower, and everyone's like, the hell? I love and that every time appears. they go to Aleda's study, she appears. Every time? Yeah, like, the last time we were in Aleda's study, oh, she, was, like, she like, appeared and was, like, screaming at them. Like, Aleda seems to dr Despite the fact that she is the Emerlin Seed, she still dreams about being the Emerlin Seed a lot. Yeah. Yeah, she knows she's kind of fucked. Um, and also, so... Also, the stools in the room are, are d diminished. Yeah, there's none left. Yeah. There's none left. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Elaine thinks that means something, but she can't figure out what. Uh, it's that Aleda sucks. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, and they find out that the... Oh, oh, uh, this one was big. They find out that the 
Aes Sedai that Aleda demoted from Aes Sedai to Accepted ran away. Yes. And that they didn't, the, either Aes Sedai were like, no, that can't happen. That was, that's against the Because Elaine rules. told them that she had been demoted and they, yes. they told her, they, they basically called her a liar. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you're, no, she was right. Yeah. Here's my question for you. If you're demoted to accepted, are you still bound by the three oaths? Or are your oaths yeah. broken because the Aes Sedai didn't keep up their side of it? No, I, I still think that they, like, would hold in place. You know, that, like, like, uh, yeah, no, I, I, hmm. I, I, I doubt it. I don't think that that would be how the magic would work. I, I don't know. I, I like if you're if you're not if you if you're if you don't hold that rank anymore, are you held to that oath? Like if you in your head were like, well, I'm not Aes Sedai anymore, so the oaths. I don't think the oaths would break just because you can like think your way out of it. But maybe. Thank you, Methany. Thank you for that super chat. <gasps> Methany, um, thank you. I, I literally just realized she might appear there often, but briefly because she has the foretelling, that might be how she gets her information. I. Oh, interesting. Like maybe, maybe. her foretelling is closer to Teleran Riyadh than. Maybe they're like linked. Yeah, she or or maybe it's just that because she has the foretelling, she, her her the wall between her dreams and Teleran Riyadh is thinner than other people's. Yeah, potentially. Right, like yeah. how the wall between the boar is thinner at Shia Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a really interesting take, Bethany. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. Do, oh, I have a question for you. Uh -huh. Do you think that the rebels in waiting will ever um have their girls take the oaths, or do you think that they will stay oathless so that they can attack? So well, they they, can... they don't have the rod, right? So they can't right now. But do you think that they will, when they do kind of, because I, I think they'll take the White Tower back. I think that Gareth Bryan will be successful. Uh -huh. Do you think that Rand will push them to not, because I think Rand would be like, don't take the oaths, I need you to be weapons. Well, a a Rand would see it, Egwene would see it, Elena Nynaeve would be like, hey, look, this is the benefit that like we've been having, mm -hmm. we we've had from this. I think it's definitely, would it, it definitely is going to be a discussion. Because they're going to war, right? Yes. Like there's an element of it where it's like, or at least you do two of the oaths. You can't lie, and um, mm -hmm. what's the other one? It's you can't lie, you can't attack people. What's the third oath? Uh, um, There's three oaths. So what's the, what's, I, I can't. Yeah, guys, don't spoil. We are speculating. Thank you. Uh, mods, we appreciate you. Um, you're doing the Lord's work today. You cannot make weapons. You can't make weapons. Thank Do you, you think that they'll be like, you can take one oath, you can't lie. But we need you to be able to make weapons and we need you to be able to fight. Does the Adam count as a weapon? Huh. Okay. Well, could an Aes Sedai put mm -hmm. an Adam on somebody else? And because they took the oaths, they can't attack people, but they can use the other person's power to attack people. Oh, that's interesting because you're not using the one power, but you're using your, because you have to use the one power you have to have mm. the innate ability to potentially be able to channel the one power and use it, but you don't actually have to use the one power to find to to for the Adam to 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 yeah. Interesting. See, this is my problem with the three oaths is that they're just there there are more holes in the oaths than there are helps. It only counts as a weapon if they took the improvised weapon feat. <laughs> <laughs> that is very good. That is very good. Uh, I don't so know. Don't it's... they have to be a barbarian? Isn't that a barbarian thing? Improvised weapon, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I know D and D. Or is it a barbarian, or is it just you need a certain strength? Mo um, I don't. I don't remember, guys. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so they 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 chill in uh, uh, Leanne pieces because mm -hmm. she wants to go find out if her people have got her notes which I was yeah. like yeah Leanne was the only um person to have like her own like personal network of spies like each mm -hmm. Aja had one and then she was like well I'm the keeper I'm gonna have my like keeper network yeah I like that a lot yeah, uh, and then they cool. send Nynaeve up after her and Nynaeve's like I'm not gonna be able to find them God, then, yeah but okay. I, I want to be able to honestly tell her that I tried you know I know but like the, the Nynaeve and Elaine make the Aes Sedai look like like children yes. in this chapter. Um, I have to pee. I'm so sorry. I'll be right back, but you can talk about the them almost getting eaten by Trollocs. So, uh, as they're as they're sifting through paperwork, as they're learning some stuff, we knew it was coming, y'all. We knew we knew it was coming. She is wearing pants, by the way. They're just they're they're like tan. I realized when she stood up it kind of looked like she's not wearing pants, but she is wearing pants. Um there's some commotion going on in the hallway. And turns out it's a nightmare. And this is the first time we've really seen a nightmare in this like bubble version. But 
I loved it. This was so cool, so cool, right? Because as you get closer to the bubble, you can get pulled into the bubble. And then suddenly you're less screwed because you are being attacked by Trollocs. It feels real, right? But you have to imagine the world as it was to defeat the nightmare. And so Elaine is outside of the nightmare. And of course, some of the Aes Sedai get pulled in right away because they think that they can fight it. They start trying to channel in it. And Elaine's like, no, you guys, you dumb. I've told you this. We've told you this so many freaking times. What are you doing? What, why are you going in there? You got to fight it with your brain pods. You got to imagine a hallway. And so by fighting it, they accept it as real. And so they get pulled in. And then <laughs> Elaine turns to Swan and is like... We need to go in. And this is like the coolest. This is Elaine's moment, y'all. This is where Elaine becomes like S tier when she's like, all right, all right, we are going to go maybe die because we have to run in there and convince them to remember the hallway so that this all becomes not real again, right? And so she accepts it as real momentarily, pops into the nightmare, and then starts screaming at everyone to remember reality. And it works, and they get out, and Step they get out. back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. They get out just as a Trolloc is running a knife along Elaine's neck, drawing blood. Yeah. It, yeah. like, nicks her freaking trachea. Yeah. She's like, ah, oh, just about to scratch. It's like, I had to explain to everyone that you were wearing pants when you left. Oh, they're leggings. I know, but they're, like, skin color leggings. So when you stood up and ran out, I had to be like, no, she is wearing pants, guys. Blue! <gasps> Blue! Thank you for five Thank memberships. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Nick, Iris, 10K. David, Il, Iljuam, and Rock. Enjoy that. Cheers. Welcome to the nerd table. Welcome Let's to the nerd go. table. Yes. No, I am wearing pants. Um, They're nice pants, I swear. They're very comfy. They're actually, yeah. They're, yeah, they're, they're very great. soft. <laughs> um, Yeah. Elaine crushes it. Guys, Elaine S tier now in my brain. Truly. Um, truly. This is a great moment. Her And, and Swan being like, oh, god damn all right let's do this yeah swan's like oh. i just i yeah this was one of those moments and, and then when they leave teller and riyadh and she's telling nynaeve about it and nynaeve is like god elaine doesn't realize how brave she is and i was like nynaeve where was this where was this no no, no 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 she ruins it by being like i'm sure elaine accidentally got pulled into the nightmare like she literally says that... I don't know. There's an element of it, though, where Nynaeve, like, appreciates it. Yes. But also, I was like, come on, like... She's like, I don't believe that she did it of her own free will. But she was brave and she was very smart. So, like, good on her, I guess. Chile Odell, thank you for that. Thank you. Cheers. 10K. For the Empire. On YouTube. Cheers. Cheers to 10K. <clears throat> um... Well, yeah, but Elaine didn't tell her to. Nynaeve is trying to figure out what happened because Elaine didn't give her all the information. So it's not totally Nynaeve's fault here. But Nynaeve is is not being a total Nynaeve about it. Yes, yeah, she's yes, she's not she's not gone from full Nynaeve to like not Nynaeve. She's there's the midway point that we've reached, mm -hmm. which is fine. It's fine. Um. So Elaine sends, every, but before they go, they wake up. Elaine does send everyone back to um, t uh, the real world, and she's like, before we go, I just want to go see my castle. I want to go see home. So yeah. she pops home and she sees the giant uh, dragon throne and the lion throne mm -hmm. uh, put on a pedestal behind it. Yeah. And she's pissed. Yeah. She's, she's upset. She's upset. She doesn't really understand. And honestly, I don't understand either. I don't know why Rand allowed this like gaudy, gross thing to like be built and put there. Here's the thing. Rand is kind of fucking up here. I don't think, I don't think Rand did it. No, but he's there, and it's it, his responsibility. This is why these, like, rumors are given life, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and, and it's going to be a problem. Like, Rand is going to Rand is gonna have really fucked up. There's going to be a big problem here. I don't think so. I think Margase is going to show up, and he's going to be like, oh, do you want to be queen? And she's going to be like, yeah. Yes, yes. Rand would gladly hand over the Lion Throne. Absolutely. Yeah. Problem is, nobody knows that, because... What it looks like is he's put his own bigger, better throne in front of it and been like, ha ha, look at this thing that I grabbed. No, but like, he's put it on, in his mind, he's put it on a pedestal to make sure that the people of Andor know that that yes. throne is still above his throne. Yes, but the problem is people are not going to see it that way. If he, look, if he had, the, so, for example, mm -hmm. in Gondor, there's the big white seat up at the top, right? And then the one below is like, it, it is less grand and it's slightly smaller and it's darker, right? Like it's it is not the centerpiece of the room. Whereas him allowing this like gaudy throne to be built there is 
it, it, it comes across a certain way. If he had just pulled up a stool, you know what I mean? It would have it would have no, because then no one different. would respect him, and he needs the people who meet him in that room to respect him. Elaine, Elaine will have to listen to him for five minutes when she meets up with him, and she'll understand what's going on. I don't know. It, he can stand. He has the one power. <laughs> but anyway, so Elaine wakes up. She leaves, and then uh, Demandred is like, "Is that Elaine Tracand?" Yes. Whoa! Is that Elaine? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's crazy. Wild. <laughs> yeah. Um. Marco yeah. says, who do you think was the Watcher? It was Demandred. What? It cuts to his point of view. The Watcher? Yeah, yeah, no. In, yeah, in Demandred the... is like, hi, my name is Demandred. Is that Elaine? Yeah, he's like, wow, Elaine doesn't like what Rand's doing either. This is great. This yeah. is good. Good. Like, dark one, dark friends, uh, forsaken, uh, one, Rand, zero. Well, Rand... Let the Lord of Chaos rule, boys. That's actually not true. Rand is at, like, five right now. <laughs> David Zeller says they'll definitely just communicate and work this all out. I believe... I believe in Harvey Dent, you guys. Communicate? Who's she? I don't know her. I believe in Harvey Dent. Um, <laughs> chapter 8. Oh my god, it, we've been doing this for two hours, 20 minutes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we haven't even gotten to chapter 10 yet. Oh, the Necklace of Daggers. I forgot to bring that up. The I'm Necklace sorry. of Daggers? Yes, Morel. Oh, Morel has a Necklace Morel of Daggers. Morel has yeah. a Necklace of Daggers with three daggers on it, and there's a fourth one that flickers in and out because Lan, here he comes to save the day. Um, he's on his way. Um, he's getting there soon. All right. And then I think she's going to be a dark friend and Nynaeve is going to kill her. Mirel. <laughs> uh, Lord of Chaos. Uh -huh. uh, chapter 8. The Storm Gathers. Um, basically, let's just... Uh, nothing really happens in this chapter. Nynaeve, no. like, basically is trying not to do work. Uh, she wants uh, to work with McGideon, but McGideon's needed in the kitchen, so she's running around town. Yeah. She runs into Loghain. Loghain is telling lords the story that he's been telling people. Of the Red Aja, so that to, uh, to undermine Elida, yes. Um, we meet a new Aes Sedai. L L we do. Lilane, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was an interesting interaction. My new favorite Aes Sedai, though, is, what's her name, Theodred? No, mm -hmm. no, that's that's Lord of the Rings. Theodred is Theoden's son. I know who you're talking about, though. Not yeah, not Theodred, but uh, the one who also was a wilder, wilder, and we found out what her block Theodrin. was. Theodrin. Theodrin, thank you. Yeah, her Theod block was, was men. Like, Theodred. And then the the only <laughs> the way that they cured her block was that they had a boy that she, Theodrin who had, had a crush a twin on, sister. Who had a twin sister who dressed who as a disguised, boy. Yes, and then suddenly she whipped her clothing off in the middle of the classroom. And it's just us girls, you know, it's fine. It's just, yeah, it's fine. I just, that was very funny to me. Um, and from then on, Theodrin was always able to channel. Yeah. No, she's my favorite. I loved this conversation. I love that she's, like, kind of on Nynaeve's ass now, right? She's mm -hmm. like, look, you've been avoiding me, and you need to get over this. But she's also, like, what I think the I said I should be. Um, like, gentle, caring, and nurturing, and trying to actually teach and, like, better the society and the people around them. Mm -hmm. But she's wonderful. So, um, uh, basically, uh, Nynaeve goes back to her room, because she didn't really get what she wanted to accomplish today. Yeah. Uh, and Elaine bursts, bursts in and is like, again. yo, someone came from the White Tower. Yes. Curtains. Chapter yes. 9. <laughs> Elena <clears throat> sent an emissary. Yeah. Who do you think it is? Do you think we know them, or do you think it's gonna be a new character? Because knowing Robert Jordan, it's a new fucking character. It's probably a new character, yeah. Another goddamn S name. Theodrin is a Bi Sedai. <laughs> Bi Sedai. I am. Oh my god, we could we should lead the Bi Sedai. Oh, yeah. We need shirts that say Bi Sedai. The Ambilin seat. But the Ambilin seat. It'll be the yin yang, the 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 the, the, the Tarvalon symbol, but the it'll be like blue and pink and purple. The purple will be in the middle. Oh cute, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I love or that. it'll be blue and pink with like the dots and the yin yang will be purple. Oh, it'll be purple? No. I like it. Mm -hmm. So uh chapter nine. Plants. Petra Nile. It's chilling. Um, uh, oh, no, wait. This is the chapter this that has the spy That's masters. why I couldn't find it. I was yes, so confused the first time. Yeah. I was like, didn't this happen? This is the chapter with the spy masters. Yes. I had that wrong that whole time. We got very excited about it because yeah, yeah. it's a really fascinating idea. Um, yeah, I like the omerna Balwar split. I think it's really yeah. cool. Um, uh -huh. Omerno really wants to bring Illuminators into Amadicia. In fact, he has brought them in already. And I was like, I don't care. Yeah, he's like, no. 
No, and the guy's like, okay, but wait, if we like infiltrate them, and he's like, how? Literally, how? They don't even marry except other illuminators, and he's like, yeah, okay, okay yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, no, didn't uh, use the old noggin and think that through. And this is, and so he's he's gets sent away because he says a bunch of stuff. Some of it's actually true, but none of it's provable. Uh, he gets sent away, and Balwer, mm-hmm. Balwer, comes in, mm-hmm. and Balwer says a bunch of stuff. But the most important thing that Balwer says, do you know what it is? Uh, what do you think is the most important thing Balwer says here? The most important thing yeah. he says? The, what is the new piece of new information that is the most interesting about this chapter? Um, Because there's one, and there's a correct answer to this question. Oh, my God. It's that um, that the tower is split. No. We already knew that. New information. No, he didn't know that. No, no. New information for the audience. Oh, for us. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. sorry. Uh... <laughs> Tenchiko has been invaded by the Sanchen. And that is why nobody is getting information out of Tenchiko. Because for a book, for like half a book now, we've been hearing that the White Tower isn't getting information out of Tenchiko. There's no rumors coming out of Tenchiko. No one's heard from Tenchiko. And that uh, Tenchiko has been uh, invaded by men riding strange beasts and flying creatures, Aes Sedai on leashes, and Helene. So Tenchiko has literally been invaded, and nobody knows. It's not like Falma where rumors had broken out. There's no rumors of it. Everything has been contained to Tenchiko this time. They've done it. Attempt invasion number two has worked. And that's why there's been nothing coming out of Tenchiko. And How did I miss that? Yeah. Which means Aginan and Chip Captain are in danger because that's the last place we saw them. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And we know that Aginan is... Di- Allegedly the Sanchez. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no. It's the other faction of people that ride Winged Beast. Yeah, yeah, No, yeah. the Tenchiko has fallen. Tenchika's Starring Gerard Butler yeah, yeah, yeah. and coming, Morgan Freeman. Coming to a theater near you. I the, Also, the, the Fallen movies are good. I, I like Gerard Butler in those. They're fun. Angel's Fallen was pretty good. Yeah, the yeah. Sanchen have taken over Tenchiko. This is huge. They're back. They're already back, and nobody knows. Yeah. And in Falma, everybody knew, right? There were yes. rumors. Everyone was yes. headed towards it. because. But this time, nobody knows. Yes. This time, they were smarter about it. They came in, they lost badly, and they're mm-hmm. like, okay... We underestimated these people. Now we actually have to do it in a in an intelligent way. Yeah, yeah, yeah that. Oh my god, mm-hmm. that's so bad. Mm-hmm. I ship captain and again and are gonna be the one to tell people. Oh, they're gonna be riding up river. Yeah. Oh. Cool. And and that makes sense as to why the sea folk are coming into southern harbors. Because the oh, they're being pushed are north by the Sanchen. The Sanchen are around. Yes. Oh, that makes so much sense. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. That, that makes, makes sense so much now. sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because Matt is like, oh, there's a sea folk boat. Oh, no, they're leaving. Okay. See ya. Like. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. That's crazy. Huh. But yes, um, Balwar also does tell Niall that the tower is actually split. Mm-hmm. And now I was like, okay, how can I use all of these things to my advantage? Because he's a sneaky, sneaky boy. Mm-hmm. 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 Also, Niall knows that the Saladar Aes Sedai are there. And he's kind of like letting that happen for now because he doesn't want... Yes. He doesn't know... He doesn't have enough information yet to know what he wants to do about it. His scheme with Morghese mm-hmm. is brilliant. Oh, yeah. The, so. like, let people think that we're working together. Because Morghese is like deliberately trying to make it look like she's not a prisoner which she thinks is what he doesn't want but it is it's what he wants because it's the opinion of the public eye and it's oh my god it's brilliant so brilliant i could never write a book like this with all the like political i'm just i i'm i'm yeah too straightforward of a person Mm and could never could never come up with this shit myself uh, and so we cut over to um more gase's point of view Mm -hmm. and more gase is like out hawking uh, she's in Hawken, Indiana, uh, experiencing the uh, plot of Stranger Things, season four. What? Uh, if I only could, I make a deal with God. You haven't seen season four, have you? I I don't know. Oh, I it's like Just, I don't get it. Uh, it. The city, the town in um, Stranger Things oh. is Hawkins, and she's out hawking. It was a, it was just a hawking joke. I forgot that that was the name of this. The town. Yeah. Uh huh. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. Cool. I don't, mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, um great. I love that for me. Um Apparently someone might get booted. All right. Bye. Um Yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't argue with our mods. Guys, They're the best. The mods are always right. Doesn't matter. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, so she's she's hawking with a bunch of girls that have been like um, forced to be her people. Yeah. And uh, they don't want to be, but they're like trying their best. It's kind of cute because they're like everyone's like in this weird situation. No one's in a good situation well, here. Well, except the one girl who is like fully just trying to be like an, a, a dick. But oh, Morgase she's the worst. is like yeah, yeah, yeah. using that against her because she says more than she should. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very sneaky. Morgase, goat. Yeah. And so, um, uh, Morgase is like, Morgase kind of gets sick of their shit. And so she's like, I'm going home. Yes, I'm leaving. Screw you guys, I'm going home. Um, and uh, that's it. Yeah, pretty much. That's, yeah. That's kind of it. Morgase gets pissed. She realizes she's in a bad situation. She like screams. She doesn't bring Talonbor with her because she's uh, too hot for him and doesn't. Too hot for him. Yeah. And um, was going to apologize to him and then doesn't. And... Uh... <laughs> Because because people keep like talking about the fact that like they're like hots for one another mm -hmm. and she she can't handle it. Yeah. Uh. So chapter ten, <clears throat> we've made it to chapter ten. Two hours and thirty minutes. And guys, th this show's gonna go long today. We're so sorry. Sorry. If you've got shit to do, go do it. Uh. But we're not leaving until we end. We're until we get to the end of the show. Yes. Uh. So here's here's what happens. Mm -hmm. Rand finds out that there's some ice to die in town, and so he goes to go see them. Uh, -huh. uh And he walks in. Turns out there are two Aes Sedai. There's also every woman he grew up with in his in the in the little literally inn. yeah yeah ha like half the girls he knew who were like a couple years younger than him mm -hmm. from the two rivers and they're all like rent and Matt's sisters there uh -huh. which Matt is going to be epically pissed off about yes. his sister becoming Aes Sedai is going to be it's going to be a thing. I mean, it's better than Perrin's sister being dead, so. I, 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 yes, but Matt hates Aes Sedai. He does not I want know. his sister to be one. Yeah, it's right? gonna be awkward. Um, so, uh, but, we oh. run into Varen and Alana. And we sure do. So, Varen and Alana are like, can we talk alone? And so they go upstairs to talk. And uh, it gets a little crazy. Uh, they little try bit. to shield Rand. Uh, -huh. uh, he stops it and shields them instead. Uh, and they're, they're like, they're very surprised at how powerful he is. Yeah. And they, they kind of back off. Everybody chills out. And then Alana says, I just want to like, check you out. Make sure you're okay. I, nothing I'm going to do is going to harm you. Uh, and so he like kind of relents a little bit and she walks over and she fucking bonds him as a warder without his goddamn consent. Yeah. What the fuck? This is your uh, this is your uh, hourly reminder to say fuck Alana, because uh, that's this 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 enraged me. This is awful. It's a big old yikes. Uh, yeah, uh, the shielding happens after the bonding. Sure. But what? Yes. Um, because Rand responds and is like, "What did you do to me?" It's fine. It doesn't matter. What matters is that Alana sucks, and Farron tries to make excuses for her. It's like. Oh, poor Alana. She's just so irrational because her warder died. And I'm like, okay, but also, what the fuck? This is akin to rape. Yeah. Like, th this is on the same, this is, like, it, this is such an intimate and unconsensual act that it, it is it is a rape of him. Yeah. And I I just am, I'm so appalled by it. And I, and I was, I was hoping that Alana would turn out to be... Like a character that I really liked. Well, I like the show version so much, and that's why this is so complicated. I also don't think they'll do this on the show. You don't think they'll do it on the no. show? I, 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 this is cut. This this storyline, whatever this storyline is and whatever it leads to, is cut. The problem is, is that I am wondering if the bonding results in them figuring out how to get rid of the taint. I don't know if they're going to be able to Just get Just another false dragon. Thank you for Another chat. false dragon. Cheers. That, that convo you chat. had about who would bond Rand last week feels really good right now. <laughs> Oopsie. Oopsie doopsie. It will... It, I, I can almost guarantee the show will not make it unconsensual. Oh, will not make it unconsensual. Yeah. I They, they might bond. Or, or if they do, it'll be that, like, Alana will do it to um, save him the way that... Uh, Elaine does with Brigitte. Oh, and they I think they'll like make it like a more of a situation. I I don't I don't know that the show will want to deal with the narrative. It's tough because I I am I am 
I legitimately think that what just happened between them is going to be a huge and major plot point moving forward. And so I don't know if they will be able to change it. We haven't read far enough yet to know. I don't know. I, 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 yeah. (sighs) I think that they're going to have to do it. And I think that they are going to have to be very clear. Like they are going to have to villainize Alana and, you know, not in a way that is. The think pieces about this are going to be off the charts. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. Um, but, but my theory is that the bonding mm-hmm. is, uh, is, um, used in a way to help cure the taint and, and, and figure that out. And yeah. so hopefully there will be a positive outcome for it. But I, I, like, as long as Robert Jordan doesn't try and like justify this like horrible thing happening, you know, uh, even dark friends condemn Alana. Here. It's. That dark friend, thank you for that super chat. Dark we friend, do condemn her here. For that super chat. Yeah, it's a, it's a no no bueno. It's I'll, not cool. It's also, uh, Leah B, uh, thank you for that super chat. Lan also did yeah. not consent to his new bond. That yikes. is true. Yes, also a yikes. Um, it, which, in a way that we didn't, like, I don't think when we were into the book at that point, we really realized what that bond was and what Maureen had done. We talked about it, and we were like, that's a kind of a yikes. But this one, this one really hits hard. The, the, the weird thing about the Lan one is that we know Moiraine's intention behind it. And it, it, it gets complicated in that Moiraine knows that if she doesn't do it, Lan will run off into the blight and go get himself killed. Yes, Maureen does it because she thinks she is saving Lan's life. Yeah, and which I... Which is also why Elaine yeah. does it with Brigitte. Mm-hmm. So that is kind of a different thing. Yes, it is still ick and weird, but... Alana is, is But Alana 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 doesn't even have any good intentions here. She just wants to control him. Yes. Right? Yes. And so it's it, yeah. And the the, the Land Moraine one is also complicated because of their personal relationship. That like yes. they have a relationship that between them and like I don't know all of the ins and outs of that relationship. Whereas in this case, they don't have one. Alana is purely just forcing something on Rand. Yes. That is to, intimate and, and, and awful. To control him. Oh, she says, yeah. like, she literally says, like, I can't believe, like, we didn't do this already. He's, you know, he needs to be controlled, basically, like a leash, like an Adam on the domain. Like, it, she basically does, in her head, like, a similar thing, even though they're all so repulsed by the Adam. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you know, and, and so it's, it's, yeah, it's this weird, gross thing where... Alana is very definitely not in the right headspace. She's just definitely suffered a traumatic loss. Mm -hmm. That's not an excuse, but she's not thinking clearly on all of this. No, but I hated this. No, I I hated it. Um, Elman Dude says, I was surprised Rand didn't steal them. I I don't think Rand would have. I I feel like... Rand did not understand what just happened, I don't think. He fucking fled. He ran out of there, and the girls were like, you, they're saying bad things about you that you're the dragon reborn, and he scares the shit out of them and then leaves. Yeah, and I I I, right. I want to agree with uh, Threk here. Like sketchy for Landon and Brigitte's bonding. I agree. Like I'm not I'm not I'm not saying I like or think that those moments are great. Yes. I just understand the thinking behind them, and yes. like th- this one is just so bad. Yes. And, <sighs> I also do not really think that Elaine understood fully what she was doing when bonding Brigitte. Yeah. It was I am in a moment of desperation trying to save this woman's life. Right. Yeah. Th- these are these are all all three very different circumstances, mm-hmm. and I think it is important to like it, it is imperative to acknowledge that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I like this comment by Cyanat. Uh, then they gaslight Rand by saying his understandable anger was just madness, and that's the problem too. Is they think that he's so irrational. Yeah, Alana's that like, why did he freak out like that? And it's Alana, what do you mean why? Well, and it gets to the moment where Rand Rand runs away. Um, yeah. He scares the shit out of the girls in the. In yeah. the lobby, which he I feel bad them. for them. He was in, a, he was, he, I don't, I'm not that mad at not Rand for fault. that at all. Yeah. That is a terrible situation and I totally get what happened. Mm. But then he runs away. He runs, he teleports to the farm and he, he just feels her. And then he tries to not feel her by, um. Going as far as he can. He like goes into Sidin, right? He, he uh-huh. embraces the power to try and not feel her, mm-hmm. but she's always there. And like, I just can't imagine. I, I feel like it's, it's awful. Yeah. And it led, led to the title of this video. Who's going to tell Elaine that she can't bond Rand against his will now? Yeah. Not, if, not that she would have done it consensually. I yeah. Think, but. Yeah, yeah. If you don't like what Alana did, like this video. <laughs> <laughs> Smash that like button if you want to say fuck Alana. <clears throat> the like button is now the fuck Alana button. Do you think that they stay um, bonded? No. Like I said, I think that this, this, this bonding is going to be some kind of 
very important thing that like we don't fully understand yet. My guess is it has something to do with the taint and figuring that out. But I think it could come to play in a bigger way. I do not think that they stay bonded. Yeah. And Elaine is going to be pissed. Obviously, the title of our video is yeah. who's going to tell her. But she's like, she's... You can like it twice. You press the like button and then you comment on the video after we're finished live streaming as a sacrifice to the algorithm gods and you can say like. You can leave me in comments down below. Um, yeah, this 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 was an infuriating mm -hmm. chapter, but it happened. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know how I feel about it, but I'm very curious. I'm, I'm curious if Rand is going to be able to like overpower the bond somehow. Yeah. Um, I also, I, I'm kind of surprised that, that she was able to bond someone who had the one power. Like, I've always been kind Very of waiting to see if that was possible. Yes. Um, Because it, it, I almost felt like he should have been able to try and fight her off. Like, it's weird that it's weird that bonding is so easy. He might have if he had known what she was doing. He allowed whatever she was oh, doing. Oh, sure, he could have, like, blocked that. her power. But, like, I, I do feel like it's, considering how permanent it is, yeah. it is surprising to me that it is such a quick process. Yeah. It's a yes. little bit of heat really fast, oh. and then it's done. And I was like, wait, what? He's already bonded? so like, fast. Uh, Mokes, I, I, I agree. I think the scene is well done. It's important, and it just solidifies that the Aes Sedai are, like, have this idea of themselves that is so... I know, but it just makes me hate the Aes Sedai more. Well, but that's what I, that's why I and don't like, think the, more, the Aes Sedai make it to the end of the series. The more we learn about the Aes Sedai, the more I just... Ca I cannot stand them at all. Yeah. Like, they are so... They're so yeah. far up their own asses, and they're just terrible people. They have no empathy. They have no structure. There's no kindness in them. They're just so cold and manipulative and awful, and, like... I get that, the, and it's good writing. I'm not saying that it, they're badly written. They're yeah. really well written. I just hate them. And mm -hmm. I want to like them, but I really don't. I don't like the Aes Sedai at all. Yeah. And, and except I did, Moraine. I did in book one, right? Like, book I like one, Moraine. In book one, we were Egwene. You Great, I, mean? I like the Aes Sedai a lot. In book one, I think Egwene is honestly like our, our, our eyes and ears into the world in the sense that we're going on this adventure. We all chose to pick up the book. Well, and we started with the show, so we started with Rosamund Pike too. We can't like, uh, we cannot deny that like Rosamund Pike being Moraine is a part of our love for that character, right? Yeah, yeah. Because we'll never, we'll never know what it's like to read Moraine without having Rosamund Pike in our heads. Yeah. And so for me, like that's a part of it. But. Yeah. Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah. I just, I can't stand him. Yeah. It was so fun when, like, Leandrin was, like, the bad Aes Sedai. Yeah. And now they all suck. And now you're like, I hate all of you. <laughs> if no, you told me they were all dark friends, I'd be like, yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. I don't want Theodrin to be dark friends. I think she's nice and cool. K. Huff says, uh, I believe Aes Sedai are an analog for the Catholic Church, just with magic powers. What? What? The Catholic Church are what? not good? No. Never. <laughs> Uh, Trevor, Cheers to that. thank you for Ch Trevor, four months Coming back to the nerd table for a Congrats fourth Congrats on month. 10k, it's been a joy watching you two grow this channel since finding your real time show reviews Thank you so much Thank you Dero, oh my god, the super chats are bumping you guys today are What's going on? popping off today uh, Rand had no protection from that Bonding didn't exist in the Age of uh, Legends So neither is Modi nor he Head Lewis Head Lewis <laughs> I could have prepared him for it yeah, it's interesting that the bonding is a relatively new thing. Right. Wait, I mean, within 3,000 years. But. Right, 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 yeah. Let's get into this last chapter, because mm -hmm. we start with um, Varen. Mm -hmm. And Varen is like, uh, uh, okay, that was a choice. Yeah, so you gonna so the Rand thing, Alana's like, meh. And Varen is like, uh, so I guess the, the White Tower actually has split, which they weren't, they did not really know about, which is nuts. Well, they found out at the White Bridge. Right. Kind of, but they didn't really believe it, right? Rand gives them the con confirmation and yep. really lets totally. them know what's up. Uh, and we get a lot of Varen trying to rationalize what Alana just did by talking about her uh, uh, warder, Owen, who yeah. died. Yeah, that's what I mean. Varen tries to rationalize it's it. Not a, it's not a good reason No, no. to um, not an excuse. do that. But also, we find out that uh, the only reason Alana didn't bond Perrin against his will was because Fael said that she would murder her. And this is one of those moments where I fucking love Fael. Because yeah. you know what? I would kill Alana too. If yeah. Alana was like, I'm going to bond Clarus, I'd be like, you touch Clarus and I chop your head off. Yeah. It's not complicated. You hurt my wife, I kill you. <laughs> there is no question here. Yeah. Yeah, that's a no. That's going to be I'm a, no. a nice person. Look, I'm a nice person. I'll buy you a drink. I'll help you move. You uh -huh. hurt my wife, you die. It's it, that. That's life. That's yeah. how this works. Yeah. Yeah. No, Fael, I, I, I did gain a lot of appreciation. Yeah. I was like, fuck yeah. Also, Fael, Fael's at a point now where she's like, oh, you're Aes Sedai? That's great. Touch my husband. I will murder you. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. god damn. Fael and Perrin, they're my people. Let's go. <laughs> Mihail, thank you for that super chat. Uh, the chapter is why episode five is about the bond. 
Yeah. That's my episode. Oh, yeah, on the, oh, show. On the show. Yes. They, they needed to set up the bond better on the show than the books do because you don't get as much time of like internal thoughts. Yes. I, I do get why episode five exists on the show now. And I have always loved that episode. So. But Alana on the show is so sweet. It's going to be so weird. I know. That's She's not as be... hard as book Alana. Yeah. That one's going to be weird, I think, for, for people a- and, and make it more impactful. I think, you know, that like. She was she's she did a not good thing. She's a terrible person, mm-hmm. and even though she has that like lovely demeanor and sweet face, you know, it's what's gonna be weird is that they they, they they they've set up that you can transfer the bond. So is, are we gonna are we gonna see a lot of like bond transferring going on? Alana's just gonna pass it on to Elaine. I mean, maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. It's gonna be weird. Like I said, I think that the this bond, whatever happened here, is going to be vitally important to something coming soon uh we get the news that varen has been uh working at something for decades which is like varen is like the original swan and moraine which i find really interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. She's do you OG. think but do you think she's a good do you think varen's a, a good person or do you think she's a dark friend varen i think is good i want to I believe so in my heart of hearts that varen is good i really like her yeah i know she didn't do anything in this moment and that but is, what would she have done well that's the problem like she didn't know that was gonna happen yeah like, she's she's in the aftermath of it going like what the why, what okay i this is the world we live in now well and the bonding happens immediately yeah and so yeah maybe she might have realized it in the moment but it, it happens in a split second and so it's kind of like crazy well too late like that's it's fucked um i love baron <sighs> baron baron i'm giving the thumbs up to alana is uh below Egwene now on my f tier Alana and Egwene can go and sit on my F tier and yes. th- think about what they've done. Yes, they are on time out. Um, and so uh, we cut back uh, finally to Rand. Uh, Rand is uh, in the village. Uh, he's run away from Alana. He's trying to deal with these new thoughts in his head. Yeah. And he and Tame uh, have a conversation where he's like, yo, you can't come into the city anymore. You got to stay on the farm because there's some ice to die and they can't find out about you. And also... Um, uh, you need you need to be careful. And Tame's like, well, what if instead of that? What if? Hey, counter proposal. You, you give me horses, mm-hmm. and I can go find you more channelers. Mm-hmm. Dun dun dun. Yeah. Yeah, and and Miranda agrees. He's like, yeah, let's do this. He, yeah, he takes a second. He's, he's like, uh, he listens to Tame's reasoning. He yeah. does not listen to Luce Theron. Yeah. Because Luce Theron's like, kill him, kill him, kill him, <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, buddy, calm down there. And uh, um, he he agrees to this plan because yeah. uh, Tame says, we can do it your way, and yeah. I will match the White Tower in six years, or we can do it my way, I can match him in a year. Yeah. And Rand is like, I don't have six years, which is interesting because I think that Rand, um, I, I, I think that the show wraps up in like a year and a half. The show. Or sorry, the, the books. I think the entire oh, rest the of the timeline. plot, I think that it is at a pace. Really? I really liked the idea that you had of like Rand's child being the like being at the battle. I know I like that too. Yeah. But I don't think Rand is gonna stay sane enough, long enough no, unless they I cure think, the taint and then could, there's years after that's that. That's what I mean. I think that they cure the taint. I think that I that think they has cure the to taint. Be... I think they cure the taint in Shia Al Ghul during the final battle. Like I literally think that they like drag Rand's mad body kicking and screaming into the boar. And they perform some ritual standing around him, curing the taint so that he can fight in the final battle. Mm. Like, I think it literally is, like, right at the end. Because I think that this... I Otherwise, if, if they spend... If they cure him too early, then he's just too powerful and can do whatever he wants, right? There has to be that kind of, like, push-pull of the relationship between the two yeah so i think that that push pull of his madness goes all the way to the end they cure him and then they go at it i thought maybe that the madness was cured kind of right before the end where people think he's mad like the forsaken and they all Mm -hmm. obviously i think the dark one would be able to like sense maybe if the taint had been like cleansed but like sorry do you think the can dark one can his feel his taint, taint getting cleaned? Uh, yeah. Do you think Do you think you clean the taint with a loofah? Is it just like hands and soap? Like not how a are loofah. You... That's too too harsh. Too harsh. Like gentle. I don't know. Soap. I kind of like the scratch on my balls. All right, that is a personal preference, I guess. Um, no, I just I think it's going to be more of a lead up, and it's going to be like the saving grace. Oh man. Of the ba- I don't know. That's that's it. That's the end of the reading for the week. We did it in under three hours. How 
How how many people do you think Tame is going to be able to collect? A he, lot. I think there's going to be a lot of male channelers now. Because apparently, like, one in five men can do it. So. The, the whole thing of, like, him going there under the guise of, like, do you want to fight for the Dragon Reborn? <laughs> Just kidding. We're going to condemn Brilliant. you to a life of madness. Oh, Tame, S-tier character. Fucked up. Tame is an S-tier character. Yes. I, I love him. But, like, He's, fucked up. He is easily, like... I am so Aloof, I, I am y'all. so happy to lose Asmodian if we get Tame, because Tame is infinitely more interesting to me than Asmodian ever was. Real, I miss Asmodian. I don't. I think Tame is so much cooler. I I, I get he's cool. I get that. I just because because Robert Jordan is putting him on screen, whereas Asm- everything Asmodian did was off screen. So what happened to Asmodian? I don't know. Rand thinks that he escaped and ran he's away. He's dead, he's right? Def- I he, don't know. I definitely think that he's dead. I think he's been killed by the one power, which is why there was no, like, trace of him. Jason Derulo. Sorry, sorry. Jason Derulo. My bad. Um, I, I wish his modin wasn't dead. Look, I, I wish he wasn't dead. I would prefer he was alive. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, Tame is incredible character. I'm mm-hmm. so into him. Very interesting. How about rating Tame versus Loghain? I don't think Tame is more interesting. We haven't seen Loghain in his prime yet. I reserve judgment on that. I, I'll be interested in Loghain when he gets his power back. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think it's going to happen now. I think I'm it is, fairly convinced. I think, yeah, I think Loghain is going to be a key part in curing the taint, and that's the glory that he finds. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I love Tame. I'm, I'm, I, every chapter with him, especially this last one where he's, like, explaining his plan, and it totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's brilliant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're going to head into the high lows. Before we head into the high lows, everyone, please remember to smash that dang like button. Leave a comment down below. Maybe a mean one. Say something mean about my shirt. It's got Disney villains on it today. Yes. In honor of us meeting the last of the Forsaken. I wore my villain's shirt. I love that. Uh, and, uh, we're going to go, uh, we're going to talk about the super chat, and then we're going to go into high low. Uh, Samantha, hey, thank you for that super chat. Thank you so much. Cheers to you. Mm-hmm. Cheers. Uh, knowing uh, that you've seen Fael Bashir and Tame, what do you think of the Saldans and has that changed over time? Saldans are f- rad. Yeah. <laughs> They're the coolest people on the planet. I thought the um, the Faldarans were the coolest people in Randland. Nah, the Saldans kicked their asses. Uh, honestly, meeting Bashir was a big turning point, for sure. He's a he's a very interesting character. Mm-hmm. His support for Rand, even though he sees Rand as a madman. He's yeah. like, you're losing it. The The best person I ever followed, utterly mad. Yeah. Um, yeah and no, Rand's the- like, okay. I, I want to meet Queen Tenobia so bad. Me too. I also want to meet Fael's mom. Also, do you know who I want to be Queen Tenobia on the show? Natalie Portman. Dressed in resplendent, like, Padme-ass level yeah. shit. Yeah, I'm here yeah. for it. Love that. Kevin L. Stevenson. Kevin, thank you for that super uh, This is the first book club I've caught live, start to finish in a long time, and it was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We're Cheers glad to you, that my you friend. Be here. That'll be my last little Cheers. sip there. Oh, my goodness. All right. High, low. The way we do this is mm-hmm. that uh, Chloe does her high, I do my low. She does her low, I do my high. We compliment sandwich this beach. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, the way we're going to do this, the reason we do this is because at my, I'm a little tipsy. Uh, when I was a kid, this is how my family did dinner. We would do our high, low around the table so that we could celebrate our highs together and commiserate over our lows together. Uh-huh. Bring us a little bit closer the way that we want to be close with you, chat, because we are all in the fandom of the Wheel of Time. We Clarus. are all. What, what do the Wheel of Time fans call themselves? The Wheelers? The Tainted? The Taint... No. We are, we are the Tainted. No, no. Daphne what, what is the, Keen for Queen Tenobia? What is the fandom called? Isn't Daphne no, Keen like 15? No, 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 no. Um, what's is her Queen name? Queen Tenobia a child? No, no, what's her name? From, um, from, um, The Good Place. From The Good Place. Which one? To, um, to, to, to There's a lot of people to, in it. To, 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 to... Oh, Jamila Aljamil? That's, yes, that's the actress. For Queen Tenobia? Yes, as I'm Queen down. Tenobia, yes. I'm excited for her to be in She-Hulk next week, or yeah. two weeks. Yes. Um, Tahani. Tahani. Yes. You just said that person from The Good Place. I'm I was so like, sorry. There's a lot of characters. It was the only one that, like, stuck out in my head. Yes. Quark's Bar. How do you feel about the Lord of Chaos's book so far? Thank you very much. Uh, so I hate Alana, but I really enjoyed this week's reading, so I, I don't know. Reading, very enjoyable. Um, I do apologize. I know it was a lot of reading for people. However, narratively, I think it was... It was a good chunk. It was It was a good chunk, especially... We need to stop doing three-hour shows, but... Maybe. Um, By the time we get to Memory of Light, the show will be like, it's a 12-hour experience. So far, I am... There's musical breaks. <laughs> oh, my God. Th- this week's musical break, Eminem is on the wheel of the Nerdy Morty Book Club. Um, uh, two hours of it are moved down to the kitchen so we can cook a meal for ourselves. Um, 
<laughs> we do. We have, there's actually a like, our poor mukbang. mods are like I'm so tired. There's a, there's, I've deleted so many messages. There's a mukbang portion as well <laughs> while we while we can eat. All right, what was uh, your high? My okay. For I just want to say, Lord of Chaos. So far, the first half I'm liking better than the previous book. Just yeah. so far. Um, my high. Um, I feel like I I kind of gave it away there actually, but Bashir talking to Rand. Rand Rand is very clearly experiencing some. Mad moments, mm -hmm. mad lad moments. His struggle with uh, Luz Theron is very fascinating. And Bashir, Bashir is be like becoming an S tier character for me because he's like, I followed this guy. He was absolutely crazy, and he won. He won, and that's that is the straight up fact of this. And you are the Dragon Reborn, and you have to win for us to all survive. So yeah. I'm here. If you go mad, th that is what it is. But I'm here to see it through. And I was like, fucking badass, mm -hmm. badass motherfucker. He's bam. Uh, yeah. my, my low is, uh, Alana. Fuck you, Alana. You know what you did. What? It's not even hard. This is the, e this is the easiest low. It's really well written. I, I, I get why it's so tense and, like, I, I'm not, like, mad that it's in the book. Um. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, fuck you, Alana. Mm -hmm. Also, consent is important. Look, we're going to be talking about some non-consensual stuff on the podcast, but I want to make sure that everyone knows that consent is really important in real life. And yeah. please, uh, go about your per personal relationships in life whether they're sexual or non-sexual, with consent in mind. Yeah. Do not use the Wheel of Time as, like, a... Uh, as a guide on how to live. As a guide on how to live, because yeah. communication, also very important, and nobody does that here. Um, I can't really come up with another low. Mm -hmm. it, it's the lowest of the lows. Sorry, I, it is, it's, it, yeah. it, it, it is on par with what Egwene did to Nynaeve for yes. me. Yes. Where it's the, it's the low of the book. It's worse. I can't imagine there's it going to be worse. a moment in this book that will be a lower low than this for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, for me, it is far worse, you know. Uh, it's oh yeah yeah I, I'll agree with that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I well, I'm sorry I can't come up with another low that it is the the lowest part well then it's time for my high mm -hmm. and I think the mine will surprise people um okay. mine is the moment in uh oh actually <laughs> my backup high is Elaine choosing to go into the nightmare I think that moment is just so rad for that character oh, I really like it mm -hmm. but my my high in terms of my reading experience was the moment I realized that Tenchiko was invaded by the Sanchin. I can't believe I yeah. That that to me is that reading the that was one of the coolest like payoffs of like figuring it out for myself moments in all of the reading we've done so far, mm -hmm. and I I lost it a little bit. I loved that moment so much. Mm -hmm. I really 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 did. Um and so no and like because it was we've been to Tenchiko, it was that moment of like oh no like Tenchi but. Elaine and I mean, saved the pan art. Mm -hmm. Like they got again in on their side. Like they did so much good there before they left. Yeah. They they cleared the Black Aja out of there. But in clearing the Black Aja out of there, they opened it up for the Sanchin to take over. And so it was just like a moment that hit me really hard reading this. Week. Yeah. I think where I got confused on that moment mm -hmm. is I thought that the informant was talking about, uh, uh no, sorry, fa um, Falmer. Mm -hmm. The first, mm -hmm. I, I, for some reason, I think I just in my brain was like, oh, he's talking about the thing we already know happened there um and so i think that that's where i got confused because i remember this this portion of it i just thought it was in a different place yeah so yeah um all right y'all that is our high low which means that it's time to do the plugs for the people who don't want to stick around for smut corner uh we might have some fun smut corners today but before <laughs> that i just want to remind you all that this podcast is brought to you by audible audible is a service on the interwebs that allows you to uh get books mm -hmm. uh read to you just like uh, Grandmammy used to do. <laughs> what, you never had a book read to you by your Grandmammy? No. Oh, that's so sad. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. My mom read me books, though. Yeah. I want to, you know, my mom is a librarian. So. Um, this week we're recommending the book Aragon by Christopher Paolini because the show's coming to Disney+. Plus nice. And Clarus has never been turned on more in her life. Uh, no, I'm just excited, guys. Aragon is my favorite thing ever, and you should follow me on Twitter um, and just help me tweet at Christopher Paolini to get me on the show. Thank you. Goodbye. Absolutely. You guys can uh, follow us. Or, oh, uh, go to audibletrial.com slash nerdy nightly. Yes. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash nerdy nightly. The link is in the down below. Uh, uh, if you want to click on that and uh, help us make money so that you can read uh, a free book by not reading it. Yeah. You can follow us on the internet. I'm at nerdy nightly. 
I'm at Clars Polaris. And at Nerdy Wordy Book on Twitter and at Nerdy Wordy Book Club on TikTok and Instagram is a place where you can follow for uh, some clips that we're going to take out of the show, as well as jokes like our ship captain again in uh, TikTok yes. that is still on TikTok. Still but on TikTok. You should definitely, definitely, definitely check it out. It is banned on Instagram. So uh, check it out on TikTok because mm -hmm. uh, Instagram doesn't want you to see it. It's mm -hmm. a conspiracy. A conspiracy. Sorry. Mark Zuckerberg does not want you to know what Ship Captain and Ganon were up to during book five of The it's Wheel true. of Time. It's true. He's just a big not fan. But what they were up to is the smut corner, the final section of the podcast, where we uh -huh. add sex scenes into this very horny book. Oh, yeah. God, guys. These... When I picked up The Wheel of Time, I did not realize how kinky it was. Yeah, um, I thought it was the 90s. I thought it'd be clean. I'm pleasantly surprised, I have to say. Um, I think that, um, I think that, like... Rand and Avienda just need to, like, bone it out. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, they do. I yeah. mean, they have. They, they need to keep boning. They, yes, yes. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, there's there's a few, there's a few, I, I feel like uh, we should mm -hmm. have seen Perrin and Fayul's, like, going away sex. Trying to make a baby. Yeah. She's like, put a baby in me. Mm -hmm. And he's like, all right, woof. Uh, there's, Matt, Matt Turk, uh, there's no Grandel smut corner because none of it is consensual. <laughs> No. We do not add non-consensual sex into these books. We are only yeah. interested in consensual no, no. sex. No, no. Grandal decides to seduce Samael, and Samael's like, you know, while I'm here. Yeah, why not? I have yeah. got got a drink with me. I don't trust you. So they're like very like weird about it. Mm -hmm. But they're two like just hot people. So the problem is if you're so if a man and a woman are, who both can channel don't trust each other, but they're having sex. Uh -huh. You get goosebumps during sex. You know what I mean? The other do you know if it's because you're turned on or if it's because they're using or the power? It's they're having the you don't know. You don't know. Dangerous. Got to keep you on your toes. Um, uh, another one I would add is I think that uh, when Rand is being stubborn about Avienda, I feel like his maidens would be like showing him sex positions, like trying to teach him Try how to be good one. at it. Yeah. So this like one, he like comes into his it's room and Samara and Elena are there, and she's like, okay, so this is how you eat a woman out, and she's like eating out Elena, and, and Rand is like, I I know how to. No, but that's what they mean by washing. I made her hair. come in the igloo. We're good. No, that's what they mean by washing their her hair. Ask oh, if you can wash. Oh, her pubes. Yes. The yes. fires of heaven. Yes. Right. 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 right you. Right, there's right. washing a woman's fires of heaven. Yes. That's that's. But what then they mean but the other woman's like, no, brush it. How how many times can you brush pubes? I I don't know. I've never tried. Rand gets ambushed in his sweat tent. <laughs> um. The other one that I want to add is uh before Min leaves, Elaine is like. Look, I, we're going to have to share Rand mm -hmm. at some point. So, like, you and I better get to know each other. We've added now. this twice before. I will add Elaine and Rand going at it. Every time. Every time. Ooh, you know what? Uh, I can't wait for the smut corner that is Min and Rand seeing each other for the first time in, like, a year and just going at it immediately no matter who's... Like, Davram Bashir is going to watch Min and Rand like, go at it. Uh, I, no, okay. he's so day and he's going to be like, nice. Good job. Good job. Yes. Nice. Well done. Keep doing that. <laughs> Do the fires of heaven match the drapes of heaven? <laughs> And that's the end of our show. Uh, Do something nerdy tonight, y'all. Bye, guys. <laughs>